Greetings, brothers and sisters. This is Professor Spira, and I'm here with Tony Byler B. What's going on, Tony? Hey, what's up, Spira? Greetings. Oh, man, just um, <clears throat> just doing my thing with the mucusless diet, man. What's up? Hey, man, that is that is always what time it is. It's always time to get to get yourself clean, get yourself rational, get yourself uh, awoken up. And uh, the mucus's diet healing system is most definitely the uh, the way, the way to go about doing that, the way that many, many people go about doing that. Uh, you know, the process of reconstructing your bloodstream, cleansing yourself, and elevating your consciousness to levels that you can't understand until you clean yourself up, until you really release all of the waste, all of 32 feet of impacted intestines, 15, 20, 25 pounds of uneliminated fecal matter in your stomach, in your bowels, and, uh, and you think that you're going to sit there and and meditate and 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 pray and understand <laughs> all that there is to understand in the universe. Um, you know, try transitioning your diet. Try a lemon juice enema. Try a little detoxification and see if that won't elevate whatever you're already into. You know, whatever your practice is, whatever it is that you, you know, the path that you're on. Check out this path. Check out the mucus's diet healing system and get into it rationally. And then tell me that your that, that your whole life isn't elevated. That your all, all the things that you're trying to seek, all of the aspirations that you have. Tell me that that that, that doesn't take everything up a notch. Or if you have unnatural aspirations. Uh, things that will destroy yourself and destroy the world and ultimately just be for self-serving egotistical aims, then uh, tell me that you still want to do those things after you've cleaned yourself up for quite a while. But more often than not, those kind of things are uh, kind of taken out of your world, you know, your de the desires. Uh, within a couple years, the things that I had aspired to do uh, in terms of a lot of the appetites of the flesh and these different kinds of things that I was into at one point, super heavy, uh, they, I didn't I wouldn't want those same things. You know, you weren't going to find me getting into a fight with, with several of my buddies outside of a club anymore. Once I got myself cleaned up, it wasn't. I didn't try to do those things. I didn't try to change my mind about what was and wasn't fun, because when you're stimulated, you're hopped up on this dead animal flesh and dairy and all this stuff. You you can't help but want to go and do so. I mean, everybody responds differently. You know, some people will want to go and lay down and chill. Other people, it might trigger a response. They want to go smoke. Weed, which made them go and chill, you know. Now everybody's got their own thing, you know. I was more along the lines of get stimulated, go out and do some crazy stuff. And people <laughs> always wanna ask that question of well, what's though the youth today? Why are they are they running the muck? Mm. They're running the streets, and they're acting so crazy, and they're so destructive, and they throw wanna do this and set fires and break windows and uh, start fights and all this kind of stuff. Go no further than what they are putting into their mouths. Look and see what it is they're putting to their mouths. If you see dead animal flesh, if you see dairy, you're seeing the very fuel of pure insanity, of chaos. You can't think straight and rationally and naturally and logically when you're hopped up on that stimulant. And with a young body, what you actually see, with you, that there, there shouldn't be the, that huge difference that we see from the vitality of young people 
to the vitality of older people. It's not supposed to be like that. It's not supposed to be night and day. What happens is if you're running this high octane pus at a at a younger age, oftentimes depending on the physiology, by the time you get older, you've kind of you've already sort of shaken the vitality out of your body. You've used up a lot of that uh, uh, that vitality that was there. It's not unlike having a car, and if every time you 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 know you had a reasonably good engine to start with, but every time you got in the car, you you revved it up and you know without like you're not supposed to do that in just a regular car, or a regular engine. But every time you're, you're revving it up or you're you know you're peeling out and all that kind of stuff, you're gonna wear that engine down a lot faster. And uh, then you go and you get this the high octane fuel and and it's just you're gonna wear the thing down. It might run fast for a short period of time. Get your nice sports car, and that thing might might perform on a high level and run real fast for a short period of time, but the thing will fall apart, and often falls apart uh, much sooner than if you just had a you know vehicle and just took it slow and operated it the way it was supposed to be operated. Uh, that's what the young folks are doing. We eat this stuff that has no business going on our bodies, and then it's they're, they're off to the races. You know, just just go and you know, I'm looking for my quick fix. Let me go get, uh, you know, let me let me look for, you know, the the nearest female or male to go, you know, to that. Let me find some stimulant. Let me go try this drug over here and do this and and uh, some people grow out of it or they have children, but they if they grow out of it, they they don't grow. They don't usually grow out of the food part. <laughs> You know they might stop some of the drugs that they experimented with, but yeah, they they their their taste for mucus some pus unless they come and check us out or they they check out these uh you know these plant based worlds they uh they, the the they start frequenting the uh, the restaurants even more and the and the their taste buds start responding to like let's uh. Instead of a T-bone, let me get a filet mignon today. You know, it, wrapped in bacon, please. You know, that was that was actually my thing. I used to like that <laughs> filet mignon <laughs> wrapped, wrapped in bacon. You ha you can't have you, you gotta have it in uh, can't have no filet man. mignon not wrapped in bacon. What are you crazy? <laughs> fifty dollars, yeah, you know, fifty dollars to go for a for a meal. You go down to a grand finale and. Glen Glendale, Ohio. Go there with my aunt and the. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the, that's the grand finale, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You know, so that's it's the end of the line, man. Yeah, yeah, it's that's where that's where we're at, man. It's it's just plus and mucus society. I'm so happy to see folks on the forum that's starting to have discussions about pus and mucus culture. Because yeah, right. that's a thing that for me we don't we don't talk about that enough. You know, there's a lot of things that you know. I just I like to watch and look. I look at the different things and direction people go in and the kinds of stuff people like to talk about. And um, and and I like to see people talking about the culture because for me. This is an important part of the mucus's diet. The mucus's diet is very, it's not only introspective, uh, which is a, is a huge part of it, but it, it's also uh, uh, observant, observant mm -hmm. of your environment, of the, your society, of the world you live in, of nature, and ha how it, these things, you know, how is uh, Mother Nature and humans working together or fighting each other, and and just breaking down the society because we get so much chaos in our heads of just so much programming and growing up watching all these uh, TVs and he's uh, we just talking today about these frequencies of uh, you know the TV frequencies and stuff. I'm I'm gonna be doing a uh, a radio interview tomorrow <clears throat> on uh, 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 4th, 432 Drop, 
and they actually they broadcast everything at 4:32 uh, instead of 4:30. You know, so it's like a different frequency. It's a frequency that is said to be more in line with nature. You know, more in line with the universe. And uh, you know, and these are high, this is higher level understanding and higher level studies that uh, you know I'm interested in as a musician and and uh, you know we, we talk about these things and stuff all the time a lot of people don't necessarily get into some of these things just looking at yeah. just frequencies and, and thinking of that idea of your consciousness is honing in on different levels of uh, like a radio station you have the, the dial if, if people still have dials if <laughs> radio dials am I going to is is that no longer a thing that that the young folks understand? You used to have a knob, and you would turn this knob, and it would go up and down, and and you go up, you know. And so if you're gonna tune to a higher frequency, then you know, mucus's diet is sort of like the foundation of really being able to sustain and use those higher frequencies. Because there's a lot of folks that we've observed that try to do it all with their mind. So they will sit there and they'll be introspective and meditate and all this kind of stuff. And then they will get to some, you know, anything that you put energy into, you're going to get something out of it. So there you get some realizations and that kind of stuff. But there's normally uh, you will get to a part where there will be some kind of wall or something, you know, something mm -hmm. is going to, prevent you even if you just look at uh I was, I was talking to the gentleman today about uh sort of meditation and some of you know some of these different paths and I was saying you know with me I was on a on a meditation path and was studying but I knew something was wrong cuz one it was really hard they they told me stop eating meat I was like okay and that was the first time in my life I desired to no longer eat meat so I would, but I so I tried. I'd go a couple days, but then I'd go eat some meat, and it wasn't. I I couldn't do it with just like willpower and just say, okay, well, let me just stop. Uh, and and at the same time, I was trying to do these exercises, and I would breathe in, and it was like my nose was totally constipated, you know. So I'd try to breathe in and breathe out, and I just couldn't do the exercises. And so once the mucus diet came into my midst. It was like a light went off. I was like, that makes sense. It would make sense to clean up the vessel if you want to do some kind of science of breath or some kind of introspective, uh, uh, you know, med meditative practices or transcendental practices or whatever it is you want to do. Why not have foundation be clean up your vessel? Because you're not doing anything over and above. You're doing actually what you're supposed to be doing. And then you do whatever it is you decide to do on top, on top of that. What has happened is we've gotten so far away that the, 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 it's gotten so extreme in terms of how far away from nature we've gotten that eating a natural human diet is itself considered to be extreme. Even by people in plant-based circles and communities and, and that kind of stuff. Just even attempting to start to transition to a more uh, natural diet. A diet that we should already be eating, you know, but we're not. You know, that uh, people say, well, I don't know, that's it's pretty, it's pretty out there. It's like, well, no, it's, it's not, that's not out there. You know, fruits and vegetables aren't out there. Uh you know, dead rotting flesh is out there, and you know, uh, uh, things. I was talking today too about that that Dr. Oz video that I posted where Cedric the Entertainer they handed him that fish. He had the blindfold on, and they gave him some vegetables, and he was like, oh, "Okay, well that's cool." And banana I was like, "Okay." Then he handed him the fish, and he immediately had a response like, "Ew, this is disgusting," and he didn't know what it is. And then he said, "Fish is like, well." That 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 let me know that there was still some humanity in him because fish, dead fish, a dead animal in your hand should be disgusting, should be repulsive to you. So that so that was the but people don't put that together. It's like okay, well, it 
anything that's repulsive to you when you hold it in your hands shouldn't be something that you eat. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I mean, it's just a culture, man, where it's like you'll do anything for a kick, you know, and that's that's what we're living in is like what what can shock me or what can bring me down, you know what I mean? Because really everybody wants to be brought down from their own clarity, you know what I'm saying? Like if you go too long without suppressing uh, what starts happening, you know, and then that's that's what mucus and pus culture is, man. It's all about suppression and everything gets externalized, you know, so you, you destroy nature, you destroy communities. Everything gets destroyed and you're just really not developing anything, you know, so mucus and pus culture is like the ultimate undevelopment of of society, you know. <laughs> that's yeah. that's like like I'm just like a lot of the stuff you're talking about right now, man. It's just a lot of it's like what I'm dealing with right now, um, just tapping into frequencies and um, the changing of my consciousness. That's just like that's my daily experience right now, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, that's man, all I yeah. gotta say, you know. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> that's like, right. I'm 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 out here in mucus and pus culture, man, practicing the mucus's diet, and I'm looking at okay, I have to really create something, you know, because there is there's no way that you fit into mucus and pus culture. Uh, practicing the mucus's diet is like an opportunity to do something new and to bring something to the foundation, you know, so like with me, like there might be this aspiration to pull out of society and that's just a period of, of that's just a part of the elimination, but it's not the only part of practicing the mucus's diet and what I'm experiencing now is actually like a whole new connection with uh, with the physical, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like this this drive now to elevate the physical world, you know, like make my space, uh, make my life chaos free. Mm, mm. And that's, that's, to me, it's like the first time that I felt a life impulse. Like for the rest of my life up till now, I've really felt like a, a pulling away from life. You know what I'm saying? It's like this like, introverted in the sense of escapism and the mucusless diet will change that and it will be like this this the introvert and the extrovert become one and you're just like you have this opportunity for a whole new life you know and that's mucusless diet is like the definition of a new life you know and <laughs> what what mucus and pus culture is doing is just the circus act, you know what I mean? It's just like people at the circus eating McDonald's. That's like the definition of, of all the institutions, you know, whether it's uh, some kind of government institution or an educational institution. A lot of times it's just uh, playing. It's just like playing games and trying to seem like a human, trying to act smart. and But, but that real, like, drive to develop life, you know, that's um, that's the questionable part in in mucus and pus culture, you know, and uh, it, it's like we're we're all children, you know, and uh, well, yeah, it's like I like to call us, it. Some of us like have an opportunity to grow up, you know, and. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to call it like <laughs> sandbox sandboxism. You know, yeah, it's, right. you know, just sandboxism. You know, just it's, it's just a bunch of people that's uh, that's in the sandbox. It's just had that just just are totally consumed. Like you watch children in a playground. I mean, they get so wrapped up and so consumed into what's going on and in into the, in the, like 
and they start taking what they're doing so serious. Like you look at it, they're they they play some hide and seek, and they'll be serious about it. Or they play some, <laughs> some 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 you know warship or something. And they they'll get this look on their face like, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, you know, and they're running around and stuff, you know, and they'll just be real serious. But that's what the adults look like, you know, when you start to really your consciousness opens up, you, uh, it, you start looking at it like. You know, you know, why are we here? You know, what are we, what are we really supposed to be doing? You know, what I mean, are we just supposed to be, sort of, you know, quenching our, you know, our physical desires or stimulating ourselves mentally? Because a lot of people fall into those categories. You know, people that's that's trying to pursue the appetites of the flesh, or you got the people that's trying to pursue the uh, intellectual or or mental stimulation. And uh, some of those folks will say, well, um, it's, it's a spiritual thing, but it's, it's, it's like a mind stimulation, uh, mm. you know, kind of thing. And so I see, I see a lot of people, they, they're either dealing with, you know, the lower chakra piece of the, the carnal desires, and that's what drives them, or these higher intellectual concepts or spiritual concepts and pursuits, that becomes the fuel and uh, you know, and I'm saying that th right. that it, it's not even supposed to be about stimulation. You know, it's supposed to come from someplace else, come from a different that's, source. Yeah, that's deep, man. Um, I've kind of been realizing that is, um, man, it's like it's like these impulses that come in to your system, whether it's an impulse to. Uh, so like you said, like try to figure something out or uh, whether it's mental or physical, it's like these different impulses and um, it's, it's like the true, like what I'm starting to realize is the true peace is we should have willpower, like we should have freedom and freedom would be the ability to use your mind and body exactly how you want it. Um, you shouldn't have you shouldn't have the impulse of like let me follow this religion or let me um, like whatever the impulse is you know like some people are I'm just driven to do this one thing you know that that to me is like there's a stimulant there and everybody reacts differently to their stimulants but what I'm seeing when I fast and do things is like the truest peace is just true free will, like true freedom in the present moment and, and the clarity to make a choice that's rational and, and mature. That, that's like, I mean, that's just so, that's so amazing and, and spiritual in itself to, uh, you know, to look at like, uh, a front yard or something and you just start planting a garden and it's like you did that out of a decision instead of oh I'm really excited to uh, go to the store or, uh, like get home and watch this movie or uh, you know whatever the impulse is is like it, it's kind of hard to describe but I've just been having this experience between like the ability to have a thought, like like I can project my own thought. My thought doesn't have to be this like jumbled uh, mental state of like various thoughts and then I pick through them. It should be like this complete clarity and it's just like I'm having a thought because I want to, you know, and that, I don't know, that's what the Mucusless Diet has done for me is, is it's like this whole new level of, of clarities um, and every t every time it's like breaking through an obstruction, you know what I mean? Because I've I've just been realizing that like cleaning ourselves up is is kind of like a fresh breeze of air coming through like a foggy land. It's 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 like blowing the fog out of the way, and the fog is like everything that we don't know that we might want to know or need to know, you know. Uh, whether it's like, you know, you're having problems with, with this situation or, oh, your job is like this and, and 
and it's hard and you're trying to practice the mucus's diet and you're having these different social problems. Like all of that is the fog. That's like all the things that we don't understand and we don't know how to relate to, we don't know how to act. Um, and this process of human life right now is really just trying to clean ourselves up. Like, I mean, we've been on this planet for like, they, they say like 70,000 years. And that's their, that's the conservative estimate. And we're still trying to do what? Like tr figure out like what to eat, what relationships are. We're still trying to figure out like how to run the most basic things. Um, and that's how I know like we're just in a spot of cleaning ourselves up. You know, we're only some of us are in the spot where it's like we're creating. You know. <laughs> well, and and what I what I'm seeing now is, as we see these changes occur, and you know, there's a lot of folks that's watching this, is able that's plugging into the the mucusless community that's developing, and uh, oftentimes people have ties to the raw foods community or the vegan community, and then you got folks that are just uh, suffering and find the mucusless diet for some relief. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, no matter how you get here, you you get here. But what I'm seeing is, in increasing, as things shift, there's this increasing, um, uh, you know, polar opposite dynamic happen. Where, on one hand, you have folks that are interested in cleaning themselves up, and then even there, you have people that that like Eric talks about, like we often talk about on the mucus diaphragm, that are a little bit too extremist in terms of wanting to skip over the transition, one thinking that they're better than the transition and and uh, you know and kind of haven't hit that they they haven't hit that thing that's going to hit them and uh where it kind of humbles them. And uh and we're going to we'll talk more about that in one, one of the questions. But um so but but we have this sort of group that's really serious about getting themselves together and really you know the, the just just a you know, refrigerator full of fruit and you know going down I mean so that that there's that's growing you know that that whole community is growing it's still well they want us to think it's smaller than it really is I think I think it's is really growing and growing real at like rapidly at this point but then on right. the other hand you have uh, and, and, and uh, Israel put this in the forum you have the uh, the, what, what, what were the what was the name of though the uh, the feeders or feederism? Yeah, feederism. feederism. I think it was. I actually, <laughs> I actually just checked that video out, man. <laughs> yeah, that was rough. That was rough. Man. That's rough. Yeah, I would call them feedatarians or something. You know, where basically what it was, yeah. it was it was obese women that there, there's sort of this subculture of is like obese women. That will have men or women feed feed them like stuff them with food, you know, just so they'll they'll like be feeding them Twinkies and and, and candy bars and chicken and stuff while while the person is sort of like naked. You might have you know, so it's like the obese nakedness being fed, and it's just it's a total celebration of gluttony, you know. It's just what it. What it is, because I don't begrudge nobody for being overweight. I was, I was way overweight. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. and you can lose that weight. You know, if you get in the path, you know, you can, you can take it from me. If you do what you're supposed to do, the weight, weight isn't even something like we, like Brother Air always says that we talk about, because right, it's sort right. of, a, it's sort of a non-issue. Uh, if you're, uh, if you're right. underweight I mean, and exactly. acidic, you're gonna, you're gonna gain weight. You know, if you're uh, right. If you're overweight, you're gonna lose it, and you just don't even really focus on that. If you're focusing on on cleaning, so I'm not criticizing people for for that, you know. But I will criticize based on this is uh, you know just total debauchery, just to totally absurd to to celebrate that and to yeah, right, right. I mean that's 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 the piece is like nothing's ever personal it's more about those vibrations like you're saying and, and there's this vibration of gluttony and you can be a glutton about anything you know what I mean and, and the mucusless diet is like 
puts that clarity on that glutton vibration and really it's not like you know like somebody can be born today and in 10 years they might be a glutton they're they're entering a vibration and you know what I mean and so when I when I think about these things like I don't think about individuals I think about the the vibration of of that you know with within the community it's and 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 right and the reason that we have to you know it's like we have to come together as a community and express our reality because yeah. they they're expressing theirs and they don't feel uh you know they don't feel no is, way about it <laughs> yeah, yeah at all it's, I mean you know yeah. and and I say that only because Sometimes if you are, if you feel as if you're in the minority, if you want to use that word, which I don't really like, because uh, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with with a quantity of it, of humans, but if you're in a smaller community versus a, a more mainstream or a larger uh, sort of community, sometimes and which has been happening up until recently with the whole plant based thing, that's been that's been the practice. Uh, you know, I talked to. Uh, some and sometimes some older mucus's diet healing system practitioners have been practicing since the 70s or the 80s, and they and they reach out to me, but they'll say like, yeah, I never, I couldn't talk about this because no people would think I was crazy. I had no community, I had you know nobody had my back. I you know so I kept this to myself for 30, 40 years. And uh, and that's been happening more and more as people come and talk and, and I get a chance to, to meet with people and stuff and be like, yeah, I've, I've actually been practicing the mucus diet for 40 years, but I'm not a public type of person. And some people don't understand this. When they say, well, where's all the mucus diet people? Where's all the people that's practiced it for many years? Uh, these aren't egotistical people. Or these aren't people that feel as if they that, that they're necessarily obligated to put their life out there like that because they weren't necessarily called for that. You know, sometimes narcissism, which can be fueled by pus and mucus, that can help you want to kind of do that if you're not necessarily called. You you, you know, you can kind of have more of a stimulation to want to kind of do that. But with the mucus of the diet, you, that, that tends to be sort of squashed, you know, a bit where you, that, that can no, that's no longer a... Uh, an inspiration to you to want to, you know, to kind of, you know, to put yourself out there for the sake of, like, hearing yourself talk or looking at at, at, the, at yourself in the video and that kind of thing. And uh, so a lot of mucus is diet healing system practitioners. They're, they're here, but they're just not real vocal people. Now, as we get more of the, the folks coming from the raw foods, that Certain, you know, that community is a little more known for being more vocal, you know, and kind of a little more in your face with, some, you know, some of the folks, and uh, and putting himself out there like that, you know, and so some of that energy is coming in in this direction as people sort of start to get and understand and, and kind of get in more deeper into the mucus diet, but um, but that's just why it, you can't rely on if 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 that's going to be the reason. Or the the deal breaker for you that well I'm not going to get into the diet because there's uh you know there's not tens of thousands of people in their 80s and 90s that that I that I see that I have access to then uh, right, then that's right. just going to be a deal breaker because you in order for you to get have access to some of these folks that are a little older first you have to be invested in the community uh it, you know yeah, you're not going to learn you know to uh you know to cora been practicing the diet almost 50 years um you know or 45 years or, or something like that but uh you know but and so she's around but she does she's not on doesn't have a YouTube channel she's not you know trying to promote anything or that kind of stuff she uh, people know her in her circle you know but and then people that have watched some of these videos know about her because she had called on the phone uh, she had called brother air one time when I was mm -hmm. talking to brother air and then of course brother air he uh, as he says you know he I I I felt compelled to share his story and kind of put it out there 
uh, he didn't. He's not behind doing all that. You know, that's that's kind of my doing in terms of just putting things out and that kind of stuff. But I felt it is very important to have his message and 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 have him uh, and, and create something where he can share his experiences with people. You know, and his and his clarity of thought and understanding uh, for having practiced the mucus diet for for so long. Uh, you know, and had so many experience, and not only practice it, but really, really push it. You know, kind of innovate from within it. Uh, you know, and so, so my thing has just been, for me, that's been part of my mission and what I need to do uh, in terms of creating, helping to foster the community. You know, trying to create places where we can discuss, where we can meet and talk, feel comfortable talking about our experiences, what we're doing, focus on the work of Arnold Eric and the mucus diet healing system, trying not to get too sidetracked, you know, or, and, and, and you, that doesn't mean you can't talk about some of these other side therapies and some of these things, but do it from within the context of the mucus diet healing system, you know, use that frame of reference as, uh, you know, as your jumping off point, and, uh, so yeah, so let's let's get to some of these uh, question and answers. <laughs> this is a uh, yeah, Q Q and A yeah. session. Uh, the first thing, and uh, and and do stay tuned. I'm uh, in a little bit. I'm a I'm a uh, do the raffle that we had talked about that I guess about a month ago. I'm gonna pick a uh, a name out of a hat for someone that's gonna get a signed copy of the annotated mucus diet healing system. And then uh, later on, there's also going to be an opportunity to win a, uh, a signed copy. And this will be the first one, the first signed copy of Spirit Speaks that goes out. So we're gonna, I'm going to tell you how you can win that uh, uh, later on in the, uh, in the Q&A session. So you can wait for that. So yeah, so first I wanted to thank everybody for the support with the fundraiser. Uh, you know, I know I'd said that a while back, and it's you know it's been a couple weeks now that the fundraiser has been over, and the uh, uh, the audio book is being produced as we speak. So, uh, so I just really, really just just so happy to see the outpouring of love and support, and uh, you know I got a chance to talk. I did about I think 30 consultations. Uh, 30 free consultations uh, about, or you know, might even been more than 30, but it was around 30, and uh, got a chance to just talk and meet with people that that really are serious about the mucus diet and had been following, and they, you know, I might not have necessarily plugged in with them yet if they're they're not uh, not on Facebook or they're, you know, maybe not real vocal or what or or, or had the felt the need to send a message or anything, but they were right there and, you know, had a chance to really plug in and, and talk to some folks. And so I definitely uh, appreciate everybody's help with that. And, and, uh, and, and that's, that's the, that's the kind of support we're going to need, you know, moving forward. Cause like we always say, this is, you know, we're grassroots and we, we this is the people trying to do this and put this message out there. Um, you know, we, you know, we don't have billions of dollars and, and the support and stuff. You know, there's, uh, and so it's great that that that, that some of that kind of support is 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 available. You know, but the more that we come together and we have good, uh, you know, it's it's always about elevation. It's always going trying to get to the next level and helping each other to heal each other. I mean, to me, that that. That's that's where we're at right now. You know, we need any if if you're focused on something other than healing, uh, then you know, then then good luck because the 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 you know the time is now to get yourself together. You know, the, the is not uh, it's not going to be a better time than right now. So, all right, let's let's get to this first question here, and there's a couple couple questions on the floor regarding exercise. So the uh, first was from uh, Ed posted on the uh, Mucus Diet Forum. Uh, Hello, what are y'all thoughts on exercise, working out on a Mucus Diet? 
uh, are you mainly cardio or do you do resistance exercises? And then uh, Brother Khalib who asked a question here. He's a pr practitioner of Mugus's diet for quite some time. He said, uh, have you dealt with anyone who was on the transition diet who ran into problems with trying to maintain the Mugus Plus exercise regimen as it relates to organs, endocrine system, etc., uh, habit based uh, upon uh, what Brother Vic called running on chicken power. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so so basically, the the thing about exercise and working out is just it's just about being rational. You know, it's it's about why are you exercising? A lot of people coming from the mainstream consciousness, it's about ego. It's about narcissism. It's about like you know, I want to, I want to look good. I don't necessarily want to look natural, you know, and look like a, a vital human being. I want to look like a superhuman being, or I want to look like a Photoshop picture of you know, Kim Kardashian or Lohan or whoever people are into in the mainstream, uh, you know, culture that I, that I Lohan, obviously don't, man, she, she, that I know out. so little about it. Okay, I don't, I don't know, you know, I don't, I kind of don't even know what they, you know, look like. I know I'm familiar, I've seen pictures of Kardashian, um, you know, Beyonce, Beyonce was... Yeah, so there, was joke. there was this joke. Uh, something where somebody was like, they, they, they were acting like they could speak uh, French. They were like, Beyonce. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so so whatever. So it's 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 a very fake reality, a very photoshopped reality that a lot of us desire that we want. Uh, mm. You you I just watched a documentary not too long ago about. Uh, steroid use, you know, and just how common it is in places other than where I live in the Midwest, but it's almost like, uh, you know, you get out on the West Coast and stuff, it's like, if it, you know, th th there's a whole lifestyle of keeping up appearances through by any means necessary. So if you're if you're pumping your 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 mouth full of uh, of, of Botox and plastic in your body and you know, let's cut this and do this and put these creams on and let's, uh, you know, and then let's take our protein supplements and the powders and the vitamins and the supplement and, you know, maybe let's get a little creatine or let's, if we're, if we're really hip, let's go and get, you know, let's go and get some steroids and let's, you know, and then let's work out for three hours a day and let's hit the tanning bed. I mean, like, look, look at all this. Look at how bizarre just that whole train of thought is and there's so many people that are that that's exactly where it is for them because it's not that they want to like they cuz they don't know what looking good even really is I don't think because we we're so conditioned to think that these images that we see on TV like that that's what it is to look like human when those people don't even look like that cuz it's not natural whether they were, you know, had some kind of, you know, butt implants or the new thing. Like, yeah. why is that normal? You know, they, they do these things on the news, you know, like uh, their uh, butt implants are up 50% in 2014. Like, <laughs> like you're going to say it like that? Why don't you say, what's wrong? What, why why? Are you filling your butt up with plastic and pus? What's, Why? <laughs> And it's uh, right, yeah. Like we say, bizarre world, but we're the ones that are considered to be crazy. You know, we're the ones that's trying to fast a little bit, eat some fruits and vegetables, and doing a little lemon enema. Like we're like we're the nutty ones. When you will have somebody cut into your body and finagle things, or add stuff in, or take stuff out, or suck fat out. And that has become normalized. But what we do is just, oh, that's that's too extreme. I don't diet, you know. I, I couldn't give up my chicken and my ice cream, you know, that kind of reaction. I mean, it's it's is bizarre. So, 
the message there is that for me, the exercise issue is more about consciousness than it is about the exercises you do or the physical activity you do. Because most people aren't doing exercise for the right reason. They're doing it based exactly, on. Exactly. They're, they're either doing it based on you know ego and you know wanting to use that as you know you know you know some way of well you know if I look good this this is my confidence if I don't look good then I'm not and I'm not a confident person you know there's that type of person there's then you got folks that are trying to run off uh, as as Gleep said the chicken power where you're just so overstimulated. That 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 you it's it, it, it's like a it's like a mouse in a or a gerbil or something that's running around in one of those little those little wheels you know it's just you you feed it something and then it's like ah got to do something so you get on the treadmill and then you you know running miles over here and go over here that's like that that, that kind of stimulant you know that 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 type of thing and. Um, and we're about real vitality. Like we're not about that stimulant type of consciousness. So you don't see us getting into a lot of the kinds of things that some of the folks do, even in the raw foods movement. You know, that that, that where it's more about that stimulating, like ah, let me get let me get high. You know, ah, let me get, get this. You know, let me take this big shake of this. And you know, it's just like no, nah, we're you know the you know my vibe <laughs> my vibe is much more like let's. Let's all chill out. Now, with that said, you know I've I've personally done different things over the years. Uh, I, I advise anybody to go in to the uh, to the Mucus's Diet Healing System and, and check out uh, the exercises that Arnold Eric talked about. Um, you know, right, right in this book, and uh, and uh, let me let me see, let me read. Some. So, what's interesting about like like everything else? I, I kind of can't. Even when I read the book for the first time, and a couple times, and I kind of read over the exercises, and I didn't try them, and I just thought that they would be maybe old-fashioned, or I just sort of pre—I prejudged them the first time I read them. Mm. And uh, but when I finally got around to doing them, I was like, these these are these are kind of brilliant because they. <sighs> The, the the experience to me is almost like something that you would do with like a physical therapist that they do a lot of exercises that will strengthen tendons and kind of strengthen uh, the the joints and you know and the you know connective tissue and, and stuff and and it's just kind of strengthening things that you would not normally get to even if you worked out and you ran a million miles and you did lifted weights and stuff. You there's stuff that you would get to with with Eric's exercises that uh, that you you know you're not gonna get to in any other way. And uh, and uh, so so that's one thing I advise you know check out Eric's exercises and and do those because they will like the first couple times you do them you will probably be be sore. And like Eric said, if you do the exercises and you're sore, then that means that you need to keep doing the exercises. That's good because you're you got to work out the uh, these things. You know what we're talking about is blood flow. You know we're not talking about like you know the, this whole you know building muscle concept that everybody's uh, you know really obsessed with and all that. That's what I'm saying by the difference in consciousness. If you're thinking about blood flow, what is it that I can do? What kind of exercises can I do to promote blood flow and to promote uh you know th just just good just good br you know good br breath you know oxygen getting to the system uh so the stretches and that's what a lot of you know the air stuff in the air book the, the stretches and and that kind of thing then you get into uh I almost don't like the concept of exercise anymore I prefer just physical activity uh, where if you you know go outside and you walk around, or you uh, you know take a hike, or you uh, you know you can always do your <clears throat> do your standard you know push ups and sit ups and 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 legs. You know if you get your legs, stomach, and and arms, you know just kind of the main. There's there's that that kind of stuff. You know the prison workout type of type of vibe. 
Uh, you can do that out in nature. <laughs> you know, so for me, it's kind of, you know, I don't, I've, n I've never done, you know, a lot of videos talking about, like, the exercise and, and different things. And there's so much stuff out there, so you can always study and find different exercises and stuff. Sometime I might do a video where I show some of the stuff that, that I do personally. Um, but it's it, it's important I think the most for most people the most important thing to start doing immediately is stretching because uh, that's you, you should you should stretch every day I think uh, you know there's yeah, of course there's been that. a lot of yeah. days that I haven't but that's that right. would be ideal to uh, you know stretch and there's uh, you know there's nothing fancy I don't think you have to do but I just you know do when I do it I get my legs and I do a couple things where I get my lower back uh, and mm -hmm. you know arms and you know and just just again I'm thinking about bl the getting the blood flow and uh, and I, li I like to work on my core and my stomach because that helps with my breathing uh, which helps me as a musician and so uh, and uh, so that so and, yeah, and I and, I and I just recently actually I just started working out in in a gym again which uh, you know and I kind of go on and off with that kind of thing and sometimes I just do all nature stuff going outside but I just recently something compelled me to like I, w I wanted to see like almost as an experiment I wanted to see you know what happens if I go into the gym and I'll tell you the reason that I stopped even working out in the gym was because it was a mental thing it was so hard for me to get out of uh, the mindset of a varsity football player and all of the ego and all of the you know because all of the stuff that I had in my head with exercise from being a uh, a football player kept me from exercising rationally if I yeah. went in the weight room because I couldn't just go in there and just do enough weight just to you know get the blood flowing, get stuff. I wanted to go in there and and uh, you know bench press 300 pounds again or do curls with 50 pound barbells and you know do all you know scream and grunt and do you know do all that kind of stuff that was based on stimulant. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, be looking in the mirrors and and just just walking around with that whole kind of you know real you know, almost a, you know an arrogance and stuff like. And it was, and, and I noticed it that that came back, and I've been into the diet for a while. Then I go to a weight room, and it's like I can't help myself. I'm I'm in here doing all kinds of stuff, and I'm 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 overworking out, you know, because I'm going beyond what is really necessary. And then I remembered back to that experience, like man, I used to just it's like a lifestyle of just being in pain all the time. You're just always sore because you're all because that's the mentality is you just. You always push harder and harder and harder. You know, get more and more weight like that. Like, like that's making you healthier. When that has nothing to do with making you healthier, because there's plenty of people that can bench press a car, but they get a they get a little sniffle, or or they get some kind of uh, you know you know get some other kind of imbalance and they're done. You know, they're laid up in bed. You know, and so so there's a so that's the other thing with the mentality. There needs to be there. That we need to have less correlation between you know trying to do all these you know this heavy working out and all this you know this 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 you know judging on judging people's strength based on well how much weight do you do and all this kind of stuff because again it gets into this whole uh, mucus thing of, of competition and you know and all that kind of stuff and. Uh, you know, but so with all that being said, you know, I, I've always noticed when I do go back in the gym and I and I work out rationally, and and I do all the major stuff, you know. So I, I do. I've actually focused on my legs. I like to focus on my legs and, and my stomach because it's easy for me to do arms. You know, I've actually I still maintain a lot of my arm stuff from football, even through practicing the diet and doing long six month long fasts and all you know fruit diet for long periods of time uh, you know I still maintain my weight I still maintain muscle mass and all, and all that kind of stuff and so that was never a concern for me uh, you know I'm a mucus type so 
I didn't, you know, uh, uh, so I just never was going to be a, a someone that would get super, super skinny. If I did, it wouldn't matter. It'd be fine, too. But in terms of vitality equals power minus obstruction, it is, uh, you know, I, I see for one thing, a lot of weight lifting weights is about form. And I have excellent form. And, uh, and form alone can kind of, you know, take you to, to different levels, uh, you know, in, in that whole in that whole world. Uh, but again, you know, my focus has been stomach and legs, you know, and then I get the arms in there and stuff. But it's it's been real enjoyable. It's just felt good because I, I it's it again, it's, it's just getting the blood flowing. You know, I do do my arm stuff, and then I'm, you know, I I don't do a lot of cardio. I might jump on one of those things for a minute, and uh, uh, but I've always been a little bit more into lifting myself like if I'm gonna be in a in a weight room situation you know I get into some lifting and that kind of thing and uh, so uh, with you know case studies of some other people I know brother air over the years he's had periods where he would get into working out and uh, and and he would you know have have some little exercise equipment at his house and and, and just do his stuff every day or calisthenics and things and then he's had other periods where he was like, okay, I'm going to get a bike this year and just ride my bike all the time. And, and I did that really the past couple of years. You know, I just rode bikes um, for miles and miles, all, you know, all the time. Uh, you know, so it's the kind of thing that there's – I don't like being in a strict – a super strict regimen. You know, some people that's their thing or, you know, if they sort of fancy themselves like a uh, – you know, just some of that's just the type of personality you have and stuff. Like, I'm I'm better if I can be kind of free with it, and it's a more of a matter of consistently doing it instead of just doing it once a week. It's like, okay, well, I'm every day or every other day, I can, there's a handful of things that I can do just to keep it going. And uh, uh, but you know, so so that's that's kind of that. Uh, I think the, the other thing that that Khalif was was uh, kind of talking to you know it, again it goes back to there's a there's a difference like me working out now after I've been in the diet for 13 years this is a totally different experience a total different reality versus when I first got into the mucus diet and I might have been working out uh, you know the first couple years uh, you know into the diet um actually burning off and this is a good concept to explore First couple of years that you're in the mucus diet, I don't care if you're eating nothing but fruit or you're transitioning rationally and, sl and doing a slow transition. I mean, you're running off of your old pus stimulant. So if you ever ate chicken and, and turkeys and all that kind of stuff in the course of your life, that stuff doesn't leave your system in a, in a couple months of detox. You're running on that stuff for, for years, and, and what happens... I wouldn't call it the fall, but I would call it a elimination or a fall when, when a lot of that stimulant is gone out of your system. That's when a lot of people all of a sudden they wake up one day and they're like, and I feel kind of tired or fatigued or I'm not, you know, well, your stimulant is gone. And now you're getting a chance to see who you really are. A lot of people don't get a chance to really see who they are because they don't, they're always stimulated. You know, they're always hopped up on something. And so until you, and that's where that fasting really gets you to be intimate with yourself of where are you really at, you know, physiologically. But once you once you run off a lot of that, that initial residue that's in your system, then stuff starts to shift. Now, now things are starting to just naturally be calmer. You just want to... You know, kind of relax. That don't mean you're any weaker. That don't mean that there's any muscle loss. Uh, that don't, you know, that doesn't mean that you've lost your libido or your or all these things that people like to say. It's just that you have fundamentally burned off the excess stimulation, which changes you. It's 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 the change that we talk about. That's what the the one thing that I can probably guarantee to anybody practicing mucus's diet is, uh, you're going to change. You know things are going to change. Your consciousness is going to change. Your physical experience. You know everything is going to shift and change. 
And uh, and that's something that you have to be prepared for and ready for. A lot of people don't want to change like that because you, you can change in ways that you didn't necessarily sign up for. You're like, man, I didn't really, like, yeah, Spirit was talking about change, but I didn't, I didn't realize it was going to be this heavy. You know, I didn't know it was going to be this <laughs> profound. <laughs> sounds like sounds like Tony is hey, that's, uh that's real. resonating. And uh Yeah man, so, that's really real. You know, so so that's so that in terms of when you talk about exercise, I I like to transition our thought process into just physical activity because one it acknowledges that we're thinking about it differently. You know, so we're it's so we're not doing it to try and you know, be on the cover of, of Muscles Monthly or, you know, whatever, these these kind of things and this kind of stuff. So it's not about, a like, this narcissistic need to try and gain acceptance and impress other people and that kind of stuff. If that happens, beautiful. Uh, but that's that shouldn't be your frame of reference in your mind. You know, it shouldn't be about that. You know, it should be about doing it because it, it's rational, uh, it gets the blood flowing, and it feels it feels good. You know, it feels good to get the blood flowing. It feels good to you know kind of you know get the, get the kinks out and work the muscles. And especially for those of us, if we do things where we find ourselves behind computers a lot or, or sitting around, then uh, then it is important to to get up and go outside and you know go go walk around, go hit a trail, or you know go ride your bike, or just just do stuff. There's, you know, there's not, nothing wrong with that. But we got to cut out that mentality. I think, in my opinion, of just the whole, uh, you know, like Hollywood muscle bound man kind of, you know, and uh, you know, and buns of steel woman sort of, sort of <laughs> consciousness. You know, it's like if if that's what we end up having after you transform your physiology, so be it. But I think that physiologically, for me, like my model. As I get deeper into the diet, is kind of the the physiology I see in a lot of uh, uh, in, in cer certain areas of Africa, you know, in, in indigenous peoples, and just a very slender physiology. Uh, you know, I just don't think that that we that we're we're not meant to have that gladiator. That's that Roman Empire kind of you know gla yeah. gladiator consciousness, you know, or that you know Yokozuna. Uh, you know, type of, uh, you know, type of, uh, uh, you know, kind of thing, and so, so it's, uh, so that that's that. But so, what's your thoughts on on the exercise piece? Oh yeah, man. Uh, my thoughts are that that you just have to look at it as transitional. Um, you know, first I'd say transitional. I'd say the diet is the foundation and consistency. Um, those are like what I'm thinking about because when you get into the mucosless diet, I don't think, like I see a lot of people who bring in the concept of I wish that I, like there's this stimulant to at the same time you get into a healthy diet, you also want to get into this like workout regimen. And I'm saying, like, put the mucusless diet first and, uh, like, really try to clean yourself up and, and do air exercises, do some walking. And if you have, like, physical things that you like to do, you just keep doing them. But, but get, get the diet straight first. Um, and then, like, as you want to start working out, think more in terms of five minutes or ten minutes every day instead of I'm gonna push real hard like every few days. Uh, I think more in terms of like what is rational for me to do on a daily basis and you know because we we really develop based on consistency. It's not about just like what you do every few days uh, or how hard you can push. It's more about this transitional approach to like, if if I can do 20 push-ups every day, then I can get to 30 push-ups every day, 
and you know I don't I don't know where that ceiling is but it's like something that you do in a very rational way every day you can develop in it um, so that's been my kind of approach and I've seen how uh, like the diet is the foundation um, and that there might be periods where you go without exercise, you know, because you're really digging down, you might be fasting or you might be uh, just going through some kind of elimination. And, you know, it's, there's no reason to, like, think, oh, I have to keep up this regimen. Uh, it's more about, like, okay, let me, let me just go through the process of this healing and then let me get back into it. Um, so yeah, I, I think that the, you can't base your self-esteem on exercise, you know. So if you have a lot of friends who are into exercise and there's like this, this self-esteem aspect to like being a part of a group of exercisers, um, yeah, I would, I would just not even try to keep up with them and really... I would bow out before I even like try <laughs> like like if you get into a mucus's diet and, and uh, you know you and your friends run like ten miles every uh, every Friday or something I would just <laughs> I don't know your your thing is gonna change a little bit but then later on down the road like maybe they can run ten miles you know three years later but you can maybe walk for 72 hours if you want to, you know, on some grapes. Uh, so, right, yeah, and there's, there's you know, a lot of... You know, it's a different of, level of vitality. Being, being, yeah, being open, because within the community of Mucus's Diet, I mean, we, we, we do have some marathon runners. Uh, you know, we do have some people that do, uh, that, that, that lift pretty seriously that are, that are into that. So, I mean, that every, there's all, all of those elements are there. Right. It's true. just... You you don't uh, you know my my message is more to the the person that comes into this you know wanting wanting to force their concept of of the way that you think about what a body should look like or health or you know you, you know trying to force all right. of these things into something that you aren't really into yet you know in terms of like the mucus's diet you know one right to, exactly right you know if you're coming into this you know wanting to like well I I, I just want to lose a little bit of weight it's like well this this is probably the wrong I mean you can do that but this is I'm, I'm gonna say this would be the wrong path for you because this ain't this ain't a well let me just do a little little cleanse for a couple of days and lose some weight kind of mentality or let me just lose a little bit of weight and and then go and uh you know I'm gonna be working out and get my physique together so that I can look good on the beach. You know, this isn't, this isn't that, you know, this isn't that, that type of mentality. I mean, th this thing is, what can I do in my daily, in my diet and in my, my physical activity and in my studies that can elevate my consciousness to the level of, you know, self-realization, you know, of, of mastery. Uh, you know, being a self-realized master. Right. I mean, what physiologically, mentally, you know, what, you know. So this is a different path. You know, this isn't like because a lot, because <laughs> you, you you see what I'm saying. Like that's different from someone that's like, man, I just, man, I really want to look good so I can pick up the ladies. You know, I just I want to yeah, look good man, on right, the beach right. this week. <laughs> like, so I can so I can feel good about myself. I can walk and be like, hey, you know. I mean, it, this is like no, <laughs> this is. This, this, this yeah, isn't man. that. No, this no, is no. Whole, whole no, other, it's uh, not, man. And uh, you know, part of uh, part of the yoga postures is you really put your body in an uncomfortable position, and so that your mind can learn to deal with difficult situations. That's part of the yoga uh, practice. Is like it's not really about like let me develop this this like physique or this look it's more about let me do something that's going to put my consciousness in a place where uh, you know where I have to really deal with challenge and and I was actually thinking about this the other day um, 
because some some might argue that any degree of challenge can develop your consciousness. So, you know, let's say somebody runs these like ultra marathons or or even like somebody runs 20 miles. Uh, their mind, like they go through certain challenges and they reach these certain plateaus where it's like, I have to push myself through this and you're facing fears, you're facing uh, all kinds of things. Um, and I was asking the question to myself, you know, how would I respond to the argument that um, like any type of challenge develops your consciousness? It's not just the mucusless diet, you know, like some people might say like that. It's like, um, you know, the mucusless diet is a real challenge, but it's so unique that I, I, all I can say is I haven't come across anything that's like practicing the mucusless diet. And um, it just transforms your consciousness, like, so, so basically, if you're coming into this thing, you don't know, you, I mean, you got to take that consciousness where it's like, I don't know anything, and I'm going to learn, and I'm going to master something that's unknown, except for by a few people who also have this experience, you know, and that's, that's the mentality I have right now, like, this thing is possible, like, being mucusless is possible, and, like, exercise is no, uh, no question, you know, it's like, um, if you want to do, like, some exercise each day, just do it, but it's not that big of a deal, like, the mucusless diet, <laughs> mucusless diet is a big deal, is basically what I'm saying, and then the exercise is, like, don't put everything into it because you 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 don't need to run 50 miles a day. You, you might need to climb a tree to grab a mango. You might need to, uh, you know, in, in a natural sense, there's not too much that you need to do other than just have vitality to walk, to, to take care of business. Um, now you have some people who have jobs that require physical activity, you know, uh, picking things up and different things like that. And uh, I worked a job like that in the mucusless diet, and I didn't really, I didn't come across any issues um, myself. Like you've said, I've, I've kind of kept a lot of my strength. Like, in the past three years, I haven't pursued physical strengthening, really. And I find I'm stronger now than I've almost ever been in my life. Like right, right, right. My muscle vitality is there, you know. Yeah, and yeah. So that's that's my piece, man. Is like I haven't actually experienced um, a change where it's like I've become weak at all. And what I think is is a lot of a lot of the eliminations can strip. Um, can strip like waste from in between your muscles and then your muscle is going to feel like brand new and so you don't want to injure that muscle you just want to naturally start the process of moving it um, you know exercise is really a process of tensing and releasing that's really all it is. If, if you pick up 300 pounds, you're really just tensing or releasing your muscles. Uh, so Right, and then, in the, in, in, and then to apply that with, with cardio, it's, it's sort of like this sustained tense, tensing up. You know, like you're, you're holding something for, and, and moving for a long period of time and right. sort of maintaining a certain state of, of tension. And, yeah, and you're dealing with... Uh, the blood moving differently than, you know, with, right, if you're right. doing cardio, your blood's moving differently than if you're just lifting weights. Um, so yeah, man, I would agree with you wholeheartedly that it's, it's really all about the blood. Like if you want to deal with exercise, you're really talking about how can I move blood around and, um, Stretching is just vital to all exercise, you know, because 
like with me, I have I've always had problems with my hips, and like just working out my hips doesn't work. I have to actually stretch my hips and apply a little strengthening protocol, um, and then my hips just like are pain free and everything. Um, you know, because I got certain I just got certain issues with my hips that um, it's pretty much become resolved on the mucusless diet, but uh, um, there's some lymphatic swelling and such like that, and um, you know, for me, it's all about moving the blood. So, like, I try to stretch that area and then do some light exercise and then stretch it again. And that's just that's that's the health right there. That's the exercise right there. You know, um, the other piece is like if if you really enjoy. Like in a playful way, if you really enjoy some things, like like I like climbing, and I would be at a climbing gym actually all the time, but the climbing gym here is like fifty bucks a visit, like it's crazy. Um, but so certain things like that, like riding a bike, climbing, uh, you know, those types of things, if you really enjoy it in a kind of just fun fun way. I would say do it and have fun and don't even think about like some kind of crazy level of exercise, you know, because that's that's the exercise right there. It's just um, getting your body moving, you know. So and, uh, yeah, those yeah. are some of my thoughts. Okay. Uh, what I wanted to do real quick, and one reason you know, I know we we kind of talking about this a long time, but yeah, um, it's. You know, I'm gonna try to move a little faster on some of the stuff because there's there's some questions related to transition and stuff. And of course, in every uh, in in every video, we talk about the transition. So you know, we're we're gonna we'll, we will we will hit it, but uh, you know, we'll we'll try to hit it and and uh, and quit it a little more there. But with exercise, we haven't really not not a topic that I've discussed much. You know, uh, and so I wanted to kind of there there we got a lot of thoughts on it. And wanted to to kind of give, uh, you know, spend spend enough time with it. And uh, what I wanted to do real quick, if I can, um, hmm, wonder why that doesn't come up. What I wanted to do was, okay, I guess it's not gonna. I wanted to actually go over that section but it's I'm not okay here we go let's try this so uh, hopefully are you seeing the um, the uh, Tony did you see the mucus diet there on your screen I don't know if you man you are, you know I always have uh, this issue with my screen. Let me see. I'm looking at it on the computer, actually, but my actually my I feed is running. I, I just stopped it because yeah stuff. Okay, I'm I'm a, I'm a pull out of there. I, uh, well, and it's I can see it was okay. We're having a little technical. What I wanted to do was share that part. Can you see it? The, uh, uh, oh yeah, I see it now. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I see it. So. Uh, okay. Kind of well, small, it's, it's like uh, expand the text. Ah, uh, this 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 isn't where <laughs> the uh, te technology is not responding in the way that I had hoped. It's not. It's it's like really slowing everything down. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to get out of there. But what I was gonna gonna say about it was I, I wanted to just just wanted to read uh, read a couple of these um, these uh, exercises here hold on a second okay here's here's just to, to see if you could see what I was what I was talking about uh, uh oh, so let me see now. I'm, I'm having some some issues with my with my feed. So if if for some reason everything 
<laughs> if, any, if there's a technical issue and everything stops, then just bear with us because it'll this happened before, but it, it, it should come back up once everything uh, is, is able to kind of reignite. But, okay, here we go. All right, now I'm back. So, <laughs> a little technical issue there. Thanks for bearing with us. But uh, exercise number one said standing erect. Hands to the side, clench the fist tightly, raise arms slowly as high above the head as possible, taking a deep breath. Relax and expel breath. Repeat five times. You know, so so yet again, you know, it sounds very simple. It's just you know, Arnold Eric doing doing his thing is real simple. But if you actually do these exercises, you see like, wow, man, that really, that really hit something. You know, that really got some blood flowing. You know, exercise number two, extend arms and ensure that your arms are at your chest level. Grasp hands tightly <clears throat> and pull to the right side, resisting the left hand. Then go through same motion, pulling to the left side. Relax after each motion, expelling breath. Repeat uh, each exercise five times. And so... There's uh, he's got uh, nine of these in here in the Yugas' diet. It's lesson 25, and uh, so I would I give that a try. You know, check out check out Eric's exercises and uh, you know incorporate it into whatever you you do. But uh, you know, overall, when you start talking about uh, there was another part of the question of the in, endocrine glands, and you know when you get into that kind of stuff. That gets into weaknesses. So if you have it, if you have certain gland weaknesses that you're trying to heal, that you're trying to deal with, then you know it might not be time for you to be exercising. You know it might be time for you to fast, uh, cleanse yourself, and and rebuild, um, and uh, you know get yourself together on that level. So if you're going through something, it, it's one of those things. That's where a coach can be helpful. Uh, you know, contacting somebody. You know, I do coaching. There's other people uh, that that uh, uh, there's not a lot of folks that do mucus diet <laughs> coaching, but there's some stuff out there. But just to have someone that can kind of help you make those decisions if you're not confident making it yourself, uh, where you know, because I could tell somebody, okay, well, based on what you're going through, it would be good for you to exercise to sort of push through. And an exercise, but in other cases, it's gonna be like, no, nah, you need don't don't exercise right now, you know, chill out, lay down. The same thing with, in some uh, in some cases, you I might tell somebody, okay, you need to you need to do more enemas, get them going. And then there's other cases where be like, okay, back up, back off a, a little bit, you know. But those are on a case by case basis. Then those are the kinds of things that you kind of deal with with uh, more, uh, you know, ind individual one on one kind of. Uh, kind of experience. So, so all right, let's move on to question number two, and uh, I think this question will get us talking a little bit about transition diet. And uh, this is from Courtney says, uh, and I won't say last names. I didn't. This was a, a, a private private message, but I'll kind of give a little summary here. Said hello, I have. Uh, purchased the Mucus Diet Healing System Annotator Vise and edited by you and have come up with a few questions. Uh, I have with, I've been working with Dr. Morris with the herbal kits. I've done with my first two weeks. I've also been doing mostly juice in the morning, fruit of one kind in the afternoon, and salad of fruit at night. I've been uh, reading your book and I'm uh, uh, not sure where I should start with the transition diet or am I past that. Uh, also, uh, I'm uh, allergic to uh, uh, to bananas, sweet potatoes, and grains, so I wasn't sure what to use in, replace, uh, in replacement of these items. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you and uh, talks a little bit about some of their uh, some, some issues there. And uh, so, okay, so, and, and, and I chose this one to talk about because there's a lot of people in this situation, you know, because there's a lot of people that, that find me 
through Dr. Morris, and there's some people that find Dr. Morris through me, you know, just based on the dynamics of what's going on. But a lot of the folks that get into Dr. Morris need this transitional information because they don't get it over there. You know, Dr. Morris doesn't deal really emphasize or talk much about transition and definitely not on the level we do in terms of where we really get into this as a science. You know, the science of transition uh, is we can talk endlessly about it on all different levels from from the diet level and the physical level and the working out level and the mental level and the spiritual level. You can, you can have a, you know, really, really focused discussions on uh, the meaning of transition, you know, on all these different levels. But in in this case, if you are doing the protocols, and, and I say, and I, uh, you know, I start, I've been now for over a year. I mean, I've for for years I've worked with people, but I've been doing more formal consultations and stuff for for over a year now. So so I, it, it it's better for me to kind of work one on one to give the best advice in cases where there's you know specific gland weaknesses or, or you know illnesses or, or whatever is going on it's way it's much easier for me to give kind of specific information about where you're at especially if I'm talking back and forth because that becomes its own art is I don't I don't base everything on merely you know, well, what symptoms do you have? Or what's this or that? You know, it's it. Let's look. I, I I like to have a conversation to actually see where your head is at. You know, what are you prepared to do? Uh, you know, when I'm talking to somebody about the diet, I'm gauging. Uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of what is what is your understanding of the transition, and uh, and and in that conversation, I'm I'm gonna. Uh, suggest a course of action that is in line with where I think you are mentally and a lot of that happens uh, you know it's kind of intuitive for me and that's one thing I just noticed just working with people uh, you know I tend to be able to make pretty good uh, suggestions in terms of like the next step but what I've tended to do with people that had that 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 needed what I say like the the more the Morris level, which is sort of the intensive fruit fasting levels, and you get get involved with the herbs and that kind of stuff. In most cases, I will transition people into that. So it's not an overnight thing where I where I just say, well, okay, you know, fruits, fruits and herbs, you know, fruits all day and a salad at night. You know, I like I'm like no, I'm I'm the mucus diet healing system. So. There's a whole methodology that you can deal with to, to work yourself up to that. So what so I say is allow yourself to transition for at least a couple of weeks. I mean, when I've worked with people, that's that's kind of been a standard is at least get two weeks in of some serious transition so we can see where you're at. And depending on what you're dealing with is what I would tell you, you know, do, do you need to... Uh, uh, you know, do raw, you know, the, the raw mucus list, that, that's the, <laughs> that combination of words that's been invented recently. Uh, or, you know, do you need you know, more of a mucus lean thing? You need to slow things down. You know, basically it, it becomes a situation where, okay, let's find the best course of action for you based on your, your physiology, based on your addictions to different kinds of mucus and pus exactly. and, and not pus, you know, well, some, sometimes pus, uh, to, you know, was the, the first question I always ask is, uh, uh, I have a little questionnaire, but then I ask a question normally, well, what have you been eating recently, you know, the past couple of days? Now, in your case, you said you've been doing fruit, and now you're reading the, the mucus diet book, and you're saying, okay, well, what do I do? You don't necessarily have to go back to some of the things that Eric's talking about in like you know week one and week two where he's some of that is for heavy meat eaters and stuff and so you don't necessarily you don't have to mess with the you know cottage cheese or this or, you know that kind of stuff you don't you don't have to go back to that but I would maybe get into a regimen where 
you, you eat your fruit in the afternoon, uh, and instead of eating fruit all day, do you know, experiment with the two meals that Eric talks about. So you have fruit in the afternoon, and then your vegetable meal in the evening. Uh, transitional things that you can do to experiment to see well, what what can, can I handle because if there's certain things that you have a sensitivity to that you really can't eat then you have to find like okay well uh, uh, you know what kind what kind of salads I mean just having a big salad uh, can be real real beneficial uh, if you start to if you step into some of the cooked items then on one hand in the fruit realm you have your, your baked banana or you know baked apple or you know the sort of the stewed fruit level which a lot of people totally disregard I mean they never experience that level because they're like well I'm because they think they're better than than cooked fruit uh, but that's that, that there's a very there's a very logical reason why that is a good space for a lot of people to, to go to at a certain point because uh, or you know apple sauces or whatever you know that it's because it it's it's still fruit it's mucusless but it's not going to be as aggressive you know you take a little bit of, of the aggressiveness out of it when you uh, when you do something like that and so uh, that and then it, so again that becomes that that's that difference between a, a Arnold Eret mucus's diet consciousness and then sort of a garden variety raw foodist mentality is eating cooked foods isn't the worst thing that you can do in your life you know you can use certain cooked foods to transition off of mucus forming foods raw and cooked you know so it's a it's just a whole different kind of mentality but in your case if you're working on something heavy you don't I'm not telling you that you need to eat cooked or that you need to eat uh, you know the, the the mucus lean, but it would be a good idea to take that step back and see what it is you can do. Uh, for me, the standard the standard is sort of fruit in the afternoon, and then a raw raw salad, raw combination salad, and then work in something like that that you know is mucusless and that you know is going to eliminate well, like baked zucchini. Or uh, this you know, steamed broccoli and collard, collard greens kind of do good for me, but the uh, you know something like the baked zucchini is gonna be you know really light on your stomach and should eliminate fairly well. If you need something a little heavier, then you get into uh, you know some of the, the baked acorn squash and this kind of stuff. But uh, but what that does is you're you're not only transitioning your physiology, but you're transitioning your your mentality as well. So that instead of going overnight from wh whatever you were eating, okay, now I've been you know to eating fruit for a month or two, you never really gave your mind a chance to transition and and almost earn that level of physiological excellence. And 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 fi and if you can't sustain it, like most people can't. For most people, there's a shelf life with that. You can you can only go so long. Again, you can run off of chicken power uh, from years of having eaten that. You can run off of that for a long time, and and for a lot of people, that becomes the greatest experience of their life because they feel so good getting into the fruit for a, you know a year or two years, and they're really high on the fruit. Uh, but then the weak, but then all of a sudden overnight the weaknesses can come out, and all of a sudden they're fatigued or they're uh, you know got all kinds of pain places or stuff that that seems like it came out of nowhere. Then what do they want to do? Like Stanley Bass and like many others, they want to blame the fruit, blame the diet. Had nothing to do with the fruit, and it had nothing to do with a wrong uh, with. Uh, well, it, it did have to do with the wrong diet, not doing the transition diet, uh, but it becomes counterintuitive because in, in a lot of cases, if you do that, you can't, you can't, it, you can't see it coming. You know, it, it sort of blindsides you, and then if you don't have the transitional methodology intact, uh, you don't really know what to do. So, you know, so again, in, in terms of, you know, I'm kind of talking generally, and like I said, if, if uh, this might be a case if you ever want to, 
uh, talk one on one, you know, that that might be the the best case scenario for me to really kind of help help you out with your specific issues. But it is a good question because it is important. And uh, as I've said in a recent post, I mean, we've the you know, mucus diet community has sort of become a safe haven for a lot of raw foodists that sort of fell off the wagon that had hit a ceiling and had, had, had good intention of, intentions of trying to push themselves, trying to go, trying to keep going, cleanse and get to these higher levels, but they didn't really spend the kind of time that their personal, that their physiology really needed and that their mentality needed to transition uh, properly and, and long enough. And, um, and so, you know, you can definitely combine some of uh, you know Dr. Morris's methods with the mucus's diet, and that's kind of I'm probably one of the only people that that I know that that, that does coach people that that does that that really uh, that you know kind of has experience with because I did study Dr. Morris's methods quite quite intensively, and uh, but then I've studied you know Brother Air intensively and. Uh, you know, and Eric's work, and just every business, that was just my thing to do. You know, I, I picked my, my, you know, I etched out my, my little area to, uh, to try and master and understand and pursued it. But, uh, but the, it, it, there, that is, it is very powerful when you combine some of the, some of the things that Dr. Morris brought to the table in understanding, you know, kidney filtration and, lymphatic uh, uh, understanding the dynamic of the the mucus system or the lymphatic system or whatever you want to call it um, you know it there, there's a lot of power there and, and so those are things that you know it, we, we will be talking more about you know in the future as, as time goes on but uh, so so I would say in terms of transition if you step back even if you step back to something like some stewed fruit uh, or having a raw salad with just one, you know, just a little bit of some steamed vegetables or something on it, uh, that can at least be a way to, you know, sort of break things up. And then uh, you, because you can always fast, you know, if you want to do the ERIT fasting protocols, you know, then you start off with two to three day fasting. Uh, just to get your feet wet, just to start to see what that experience is like. You know, kind of get into the fast and come out. Um, in some cases, depending on what's going on physiologically, you can get into the green drinks. You know, there's, so there's so many options uh, and directions that you can go within the context of the transition diet and the mucus's diet. But it's a matter of what do you need. You know, what does any individual person need? Uh, because that's the, that's the power of the diet. If you situate and organize things in the right order, you can. It, it's just some some remarkable things that can take place. Uh, sometimes people don't really focus enough on on that part of it. You know, combining things properly, eating things at the right time of day in the right order. Uh, and that's part of the art form, you know, part of understanding yourself and, and understanding the dynamics of the system, uh, you know, to kind of really, really move forward. And uh, and I'll kind of run right in as we're talking about this. Another question: What do you do to keep from binging? And what is your favorite meal, uh, mucus lean meal on the diet? So that sort of gets into you know again what we're talking about here, which is transition. And uh, okay, what I did back when back when there was when I used to want to binge, you know, when I was really trying to get off of meat, get off of dairy, you know, those early those first couple years of struggle of just being into this and like, okay, I'm just really I'm just really trying to clean myself up. Um, my best methodology was to, you know, I kind of did, did a lot of enemas, and so I might do an enema in the morning, and, but then in the in the evening at dinner time, if I started craving meat or I started craving dairy, I immediately did an enema. I mean, I didn't don't don't pass go to not collect two hundred dollars. If there was a craving for flesh, a lemon juice enema was going to be immediate. And 
then I sort of made the deal with myself that I wasn't going to force myself to not eat it. I would just do enema first, and then an hour and a half after my enema, if I still crave whatever it was that I was craving, then I'll go eat it. But that never happened. I always had more control after I did the enema and kind of chilled out and rested a minute. And then it was like, okay, well, now I can, I can eat more rationally. Now I can eat a, a transitional meal as opposed to something else. But, uh, but there's still items that popped up that were on my transition that I would overeat. And uh, and that kind of thing. And so my, my main thing was to not do it on the worst of the worst. So if, if I am going to fall into a little trap of, of eating something that I know is not optimal, then it's it's not going to be on pus. You know, I, mean, I sort of made that a rule. <laughs> I'm not going to overeat that. And, uh, and the more that I incorporated vegetables in and... Uh, you know, in, you know. In my case, I ate a lot of. Uh, I didn't. I didn't come to th through a raw foodist mentality into the diet, so I had no problem combining the, uh, uh, you know, the, the raw salads and ha and making nice amounts of the steamed vegetables. Uh, and the, and so those, I learned how to make it. You know, with the onion saute and. You know, throw that in with the steamed broccoli and cabbage, and you know, I would just fill me up, and I'm, and it was better to be filled up with that than it was with whatever. And in my case, I'm, I'm a, you know, there's different types of eaters. Some people, some people are not gluttonous, but they like to eat really concentrated pus. For instance, people that like something like sushi, uh, you know, they, 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 you might only have like one or two. I could not, I never, I've never even tried that, <laughs> but uh, because I knew it wouldn't be for me, because any, any of that kind of stuff where you have little finger foods or you have a real small portion of something that's really high octane, you know, some people do that with like eggs too. You might, might be like one or two eggs or like a couple hard-boiled eggs. You know, some people that have those diets, they'll eat like two hard-boiled eggs and a piece of toast. Like, I could never eat like that because I, I, I just didn't run on pus like that. I wanted to be gluttonous. And so for my breakfast, I had to have, you know, five or six pancakes 10 pieces of bacon, cheesy eggs, and, you know, two or three pieces of toast with jelly. I mean, you know, it's in one meal, eating it within a half hour. You know, like the, I'm, I'm coming from the gluttony standpoint as, a, as opposed from the, the uh, oftentimes uric acid types will be the kind of people that don't necessarily stuff themselves, but the, uh, the intensity of the pus that they eat is very concentrated. And, uh, you know, I've noticed that. And, and so you can kind of, you actually go around the world and see people physiologically. A lot of, there's a lot of people that are uric acid types of physiology. And if you don't know what that means, check out the mucus diet and the sections that talk about body type, uric acid versus, uh, uh, versus mu mucus type or a fatty type of physiology. It was an important thing to understand. It doesn't really get discussed enough. But, uh, you know, th those are issues that, really like I mean the reason that that's so important is to me the experience of a uric acid type of physiology and the kinds of things that you do on the transition are going to be way different from a mucus type of physiology so you know uric acid type of physiology is the person that's you know is very thin normally and they can eat anything and don't really gain any weight it's not that they have the high metabolism. They, they're uric acid type. Their, their body deals with pus and mucus differently. Uh, and it deals with that toxicity differently, breaks it down differently. And a fatty type of physiology is going to deposit this, this food and this, this uneliminated waste uh, into the tissue system, into the lymphatic, you know, you know, through the you know, system, and what you know, just it's going to go that route, and then it's just going to sit there until you do detox or cleanse, or you know, get to a point where you can eliminate uh, that old stuff. People call it fat.
it's just mucus. Uh, you can call it what you want. It's just mucus. But so, so I say all that just to understand where I was coming from as a glutton of the highest order. For me, it was about quantity versus the quality of pus. So I, 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 I could go a meal without eating pus-forming foods, but it was going to be a huge meal. You know, normally it was like spaghetti meals or something like that, where it's this huge plate of spaghetti and, uh, you know, all kinds of, I still have, I used to put like a half a thing of Parmesan cheese on top of it. But, uh, you know, so it just be this, this huge kind of th thing, but I'm not, but, you know, but it's not just sort of like a small amount where somebody else might have a dinner and they have a couple pieces of, of sushi or, like I said, a couple little hard-boiled eggs or a small little piece of beef or something like that. I, c I could just never do that. So, accordingly, my transition had to take that into account. So, in my case, they, you know, I had to sort of transition off of wanting to stuff myself and just have that sort of heavy feeling all the time. And so the, the steamed vegetables stuff, I mean, I used to get cases of, of, uh, of cabbage. You, for like 10 bucks, you could get one of those things of like 30 heads of cabbage in a, in, in a bag. And, uh, and I'd get that, and I would be on cabbage for two, you know, two months, uh, get a bunch of broccoli, and, uh, and just I would just make an onion saute, and and ste I would f steam the broccoli and cabbage first, make the onion saute, and then put the steamed, and then you gently steam it. You don't overcook it, but then put the put that into the the mixture, you know, with the with the onions and stuff, the the onion saute, and uh, and then and then eat that in combination with my raw salad. And uh, and that filled me up, you know. It kind of gave me that full feeling that I wanted, uh, that I needed in order to transition. And uh, so uh, so that's just that's me. Everybody sort of has to deal with that, uh, you know, differently. Uh, with uric acid types, oftentimes I'm recommending that they do a lot of green drinks. You know, juice a lot of vegetables, uh, eat a lot of vegetables, you know, eat a lot of raw vegetables, you eat some of the cooked vegetables because you're going to be neutralizing those acids. Because uh, it's acid is what is making you feel hungry. I mean, it's not real hunger. It's really just the elimination of toxic waste in your stomach that's coming as, as soon as it, it, it all the stuff is left your stomach, all these acids start to come out and start you know, chewing on the inside of your stomach, and you, and you call that hunger. That's not real hunger. You know, real hunger is really actually in the mouth. Most people don't even, in, in the Western world, really don't experience real hunger. You know, like 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 what you would really call hunger. But that stomach thing is more of a just that just a uh, the 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 need to eliminate toxicity. You know, wanting to do something with this toxic waste and acid that's in your stomach. And it actually doesn't take that long to neutralize it and eliminate it, at least not for me. And when I say not too long, a couple years to me is not a long time. And so, but even within six or seven months, the, the, the kind of acids that were necessary to crave and eliminate meat were bye-bye. Were I mean, they, they were just gone. And uh, it, it was a whole different thing. For some people, as they, they would say, well, that's not fast enough because they want to do everything overnight. But uh, I, I did things very, very methodically and very slowly and, and never felt never felt rushed uh, in terms of feel like, like I had to live up to some kind of concept or some kind of community, so, uh, you know, guidelines or something like that. It was like I'm, I'm wanting to heal myself and get myself together. And I'm doing this for me, you know, so I'm not trying to press people. Uh, and it was the same thing when I did, I've done three six-month-long juice fast. And the first one I did, you know, the mu other mucus diet healers or practitioners are kind of looking at me, kind of like, nah, he's, he's about to... He's about to hit the wall. Because they, 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 you know, they were like, man, no, this is, you know, but... It I wasn't trying. I was doing it for me. Like I I knew 
that it was a part of what I needed to do for my transition. And it was my body that was calling me to do it. It didn't have anything to do with, with all this other stuff going on. You know, there, there was a dynamic where everybody was in, in the community setting. We were plugging in to, uh, to one another. You know, so Brother Air was fast and doing his nine and a half month fast. And uh, there was other, other folks in the camp were fasting. And we were kind of plugged in each other and feeding off each other's energy. And, that, and that's a study that we need to investigate down the road because there's a lot of power in being in close proximity to other people that's fasting and sort of you know being on that journey together uh, and uh, so that was an experience since then I've had the experience of sort of of, of doing things w without the training wheels you know doing you know four month long uh, fasting periods or you know months on fruit and all this kind of stuff that I've just done in my own personal practice and I had this and I had st sort of stepped away from humanity I mean I went a whole year where I really <laughs> didn't communicate much with humanity I won't won't get into all that right now but uh, so <laughs> the the <laughs> the point is the point is this path is deep it's heavy and it can take you into some serious serious spaces but uh, but as far as just get you know just dealing with the uh, the cravings and the mucosine stuff, uh, some of my favorite. I mean, I told you about the vegetables. Outside of the vegetable realm, for me, stuff that eliminated better than other things was uh, beans. Uh, I would get into the black beans and kidney beans, and if you're all foodists, just settle down. This this part of the discussion is not for you. But those of you that's interested in the mucus lean and the, and the transition and that kind of stuff and are looking for things that you can eat that are going to do the least amount of damage in the long run. That's how we try to evaluate good versus bad. You know, something that we would suggest for a long-term transition is something that you would want to get off of sooner than later. So, for instance, rice you want to get off of sooner than later. You know, it turns into this glue immediately and it goes in your system. And I don't care what color rice it is, uh, that's something that we recommend getting off sooner than later. But in my body, beans, they, 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 didn't, they weren't great, you know, they're starchy. But oftentimes if I was doing my enemas and I was kind of cleaned up, then they would go through fairly quickly without leaving behind a lot of slime. And I know it's not. I I know when something's leaving behind slime and when it's not leaving behind slime, just based on simple observations. I mean, if you have a bowel movement and you and you wipe, if you've been heating some slimy stuff, there's going to be some slimy residue. Uh, if it's not, if it, if it's not slimy and you wipe and there ain't really nothing there, then stuff is going through, and that's what happens often. You get into the fruit levels and stuff. Uh, you know, and you can really see that. that if you, when you're eating the mucus lean stuff, you can visibly see that stuff is stickier uh, c coming out. You know, it's going to smell worse. You know, it's all that kind of stuff. So these are just, you know, the observations to, to have. In terms of evaluating what is, is the best uh, mucus lean items for you, you know. But I've, I've pretty much experienced everything. I mean, because I checked all these different things out. And um, but you know I just kind of came back to the beans as being something that for me were less addictive than some other things, and uh, you know so that was something uh, something in between sort of like the, the the beans and something that's totally mucusless would be like the green peas. Uh, the green pea level is kind of interesting because I always thought they eliminated really well. I never saw a whole lot of slimy residue, and it, and it seemed to go through pretty good. And, uh, and it kind of gave me that that feeling of like, okay, yeah, there's you know something something going on here. But again, the the main practice of of the the mucus lean process is to always have the raw salad involved. You know, you never just eat some cooked food by itself. You always have, uh, you know, have a salad nearby. And, uh, you know, so that, that'll be that. If you want, if you want a little more about that, I would check out, uh, Spirit Speaks. 
I get into detail a little more detail about some of the mucus lean menus that I used, uh, you know, over the years. And um, it's 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 always sort of a challenging topic to talk about because on one hand you want to like share things that kind of help give people options. That's another one good thing I'm really good at is if somebody tells me exactly what their predicament is, I can always give an option that's going to be a, an incremental step in the right direction. Uh, and, and oftentimes it's something a lot of people wouldn't necessarily think of. But Brother Air used to do that for me. Uh, and so I kind of learned, you know, I kind of learned that, that skill of th always thinking about an incremental, like there's always a transitional option. That's the one thing I know. There's always something that you can eat that will be uh, uh, satiating that is not as bad as whatever it is you're craving, but will help you deal with the cr with whatever with that craving. Um, so, but the challenge is that you start talking a whole, but like if I start just saying all the different things that I've experimented with, the things that I've used as, uh, as mucus lean transitional tools, then what happens is that, that, that mucus addiction and other people listening, it kind of activates something and then people want to start just experimenting for the sake of experimentation, you know, where they're like, oh man, well Spirit tried this, well, let me try that. It's like, well, did you really need that? <laughs> you know, it's one thing if you're kind of if you really need a particular item, or if it's something that you probably wouldn't have ever eaten if I hadn't said anything. You know, so it's it's one of the most challenging things about trying to educate people about the mucus diet because you you need to be open and you you want to share your your experiences and, and all that kind of stuff, but it has to be in the right context, or people are gonna totally misunderstand the, the sophistication and, uh, and dynamics of the transition diet. Uh, you know, because if I start talking about, well, at some point I had processed vegan foods and then some, oh, Spiro's talking about, well, let me go, I better go get some of that. I was like, no, no, hold up there. You know, there's a methodology <laughs> to it. And Eric even talked, you know, Eric talks about some of those items in in the mucus's diet book but there you always have to be applying the transitional methodology there's always a method to the madness no matter what you're doing and that is the main difference with people that practice the mucus's diet healing system and and everybody else and uh, so so yes yeah, so you you got anything to add to to the, to this discussion there Tony yeah, um, still talking about the uh, the issue of binging. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting because, uh, well, first of all, my physiology is kind of like yours in uh, that I I tend to I tended to lean toward the side of overeating. Like that's naturally that's just something that my body wanted more than like, yeah, the concentrated pus. Um, and dealing with the binging, um, I think that the most important thing to just highlight is that it has nothing to do with food or, or needing to eat. It always has to do with the waste that's in the system. Um, so you always want to approach it by doing an enema. Um, preferably after the enema you might have something like a, a, veg, a fruit or a vegetable juice uh, and then wait like give it like two hours or something uh, or just give it some time to move some of your waste and uh, then it's, it's like what you said, like, then if you're still really craving it, then you can start looking for, like, um, alternatives or what's the best meal that you can make. Um, it actually can become kind of fun in the sense that, let's say you really want to binge, ask yourself, what exactly do I want? And just be, like, really honest with yourself. Like, it could be the most garbage thing that you would ever think of. Just 
what are you really craving? If, if you could have anything in the world, what would you want? And then you can look at that and then look at a mucusless option, um, you know, and then you can go to the store or whatever you need to do to actually make that meal. Um, and, and that's one way to approach it, like from a mucusless perspective. And the other part to it is it, the whole thing has to be put in the context of what you are doing at the moment. So are you coming off of a fast? Are you trying to work your way into a fast? Are you mucusless right now? Are you in a mucus lean period? Are you trying to get back to mucusless? Are you mucusless and you're coming back to mucus lean? Like these all have different protocols in a sense. So uh, I would just say that first of all, it's just the enema is the most important. Do a regular enemas and uh, other than that, it's just like com the experience will teach the process. You just keep reading uh, the book. Um, you can read like Fred Hirsch's menu ideas. That's that's really interesting. That's that's something that I actually just revisited. Was uh, I went through the menus the other day and just kind of created my own little meal and went to the store and tried it out. Um, and it was really, really good option, a mucus list and, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's part of the exploration. Uh, and, um, yeah, that's, that's all I really have to say about it, man. It's just the enemas are spot on, and really it's going to be the experience that's going to be the teacher. So whether you're overeating mucus list foods and it's making you feel kind of funny at night or... Uh, you have this issue with like binging on some bad mucus forming food or whatever it is it's getting kicked out like you're you're on the path where that stuff is getting kicked out so it might take it might take three months or it might take the next year and a half uh, and I mean that sounds like you know if you just overate or whatever it's like oh god I can't keep doing this <laughs> but but that's the mentality like you it's very interesting when you get to that spot where you overeat on let's say like cooked sweet potatoes or you overeat on uh, whatever it is it could be the toast it could be whatever if you look at what everybody else is eating in the world um, that's where you get a chance to just laugh and be like, wow, I'm really transitioning because this stuff is like I'm ready to get off of this and it's not that bad. Like, so that's that's the mentality. Right, is, right. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's just like I'm up here really wanting to get off of this mucus forming food or this overeating, and that's the best that's the best experience that you could have right now is like this 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 drive to want to live in a way that honors yourself. You know, you don't want to be having gas at night because you overate, and uh, you don't want, like, like even with the enemas, it's like, I don't want to be doing enemas to get out yesterday's dinner all the time. I really want to get down to this worst stuff that's in me. Mm -hmm. You know, so all of that is just the drive. It's just that that mentality of like I'm gonna experience this thing. So that's that's what it is for me, man. Is this working out of of things like cravings, things like overeating, and those are all those great skills that you just learn on the mucusless diet. And you start getting more mature. You start. Uh, not wanting so much, you know, that's just part of it is you start being satisfied with what's comfortable, what's manageable, and what's rational, uh, and, and that's the opportunity. That's, that's just the opportunity of the mucus diet, you know. Yeah, most so That's, most that's kind of my thoughts, yeah. Yeah, okay, so what we're going to do now...
is uh, just chilling with the uh, get a little music going here again. Uh, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna have the um, uh, the giveaway. Uh, what I did was, uh, if you remember, about a month ago, I said that I would uh, give away one copy of the uh, annotated mucus of diet healing system signed by me to somebody, uh, to anybody that left a comment on the uh, on the Amazon page uh, that that left a review, because uh, the one of the best ways. To help, to help us out, you know, and get the word, getting the word out there, is uh, is just simply leaving uh, a good review on the, uh, the Mucus's Diet uh, Amazon page, and so uh, so we got got several people that I think so far I got it's about 74 reviews total, but we're always trying to get more. I mean, we really need like hundreds of reviews of just good reviews of. People just kind of stop by and say, "Yeah, I've read read the book. It's you know whatever whatever your opinion is." Um, so uh, so I have the the names here in this uh, thing here. I'll close my eyes and reach in. The first one that I grab. Who do we got? Okay, so we got uh, Suzanne Lum Loomis, and uh, so this is the winner of the, uh, the this this giveaway. So I will con contact uh, try to contact Susan and do that. So yeah, so I want to do you know have, do more stuff like that, and just a little. Uh, you just have to kind of just watch out for them and be diff do different things in some of these uh, sessions and um, sorry I'm listening <laughs> sorry listening to the music it's my man Fred Wesley that's what he was listening to here yeah you know, he's man one that's of my nice. favorite, favorite trouble players here I'm enjoying that <laughs> We're just chilling and free. We're just Yeah, see how good that feels, man, when you ain't all hopped up on, you know, uh, like, I, like I say, some of that, that heavy metal is kind of, you know, I'm constipated, I'm constipated, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, man, just, just, and, and even like a lot of the, you know, the hip hop stuff is all, you know, it's, it's real stimulating, <laughs> I was like, man, what about chilling? You know, just just let's let's chill. You know, that that that, that type of that type of thing. Which a lot of people don't even they don't even know what to do with that level of chilling. You know, just like just really, <laughs> really being chill. <laughs> you know, like just, just just feeling so good that you don't have to move around. You just right, right. <laughs> it's like yeah. <laughs> you know, just, just be right, right there. It's just like you don't need nothing. Just, just hit that groove, and just keep it, keep it right there. You know, that's that's a that's a thing that a lot of, a lot of folks, man. I feel sorry for a lot of the young people, man. They just never. I don't even think they slow down fat long enough to even experience that. Just to, to experience that sort of. A moment of relaxation, because every from from going to bed until getting up, the only time that they're not, you know, just is just at it is sleeping, uh, and then you know soon, and then they'll have these long, you know, nine hour sleeping sessions or something, and then get up and they're running around again, and you know, but don't really experience that. Uh, 
just just chilling, <laughs> just just to just to not be because when you have so much stuff like this this poison running through your brain, you you're just constantly like thinking, oh, okay, well let me do this. And it's like you know, so you you're thinking about getting stimulant. How am I going to get stimulant? You know, it's like, I, I, you know, okay, man, I'm going to get, get, get this food. I'm going to go do this. And, man, let me go find these, these girls over here. Let me do this. You know, it's like, hey, let me wait. What's going on? Let me like, text somebody. It's just like, and, and I've had the experience practicing the diet where especially fasting, like four or five months into a fast, and it feels like you're just floating. You're just sort of floating on a cloud around, and Everybody around you, it's like, like like ants or something that they're just moving so fast, and it's and it but it doesn't mean anything. It's not moving fast to accomplish some great goal. It's just you know stimulation going over here. I don't you know these these routines. I'm okay. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go. And it's just and, and you just look at everything and it's like it's just like everything is it's just. It's it's hard to even describe the experience, but it's just like everything is just moving at these lightning speeds around you, and and, and you uh, you know watching people age. It's like it, it really feels like you're in a you you know you're sort of in a time capsule because you're not aging like that. You know you're not you know, physiologically you're you're not going through this same experience that these folks around you are, and you just sort of look up sometimes and you just like. Wow, and I mean, just in in that moment that like the moment that you look up and say, "Wow, that's been that like two days have passed, and they've they've already been up and went to sleep and ran around and all this kind of stuff, and you're still looking at them." Wow, <laughs> you know, what I mean, it's, it's it's just this whole experience, the whole consciousness, everything's it, it it's like you know slows down. It's like Brother Air talked about with the breath, uh, where with a dog. They they have they have what they say uh, the, the dog years where where those dogs don't live real long but look at how they breathe <laughs> like it, just do just do that for like five seconds you know just I mean it's not good that you shouldn't breathe like that through your mouth but but just to understand think about doing two two breaths per minute if you're doing your breath exercises and you you know, and you hold it for 20 seconds and you breathe out for 20 seconds or whatever, you know, in, in for 20, hold for 20, out for 20 or whatever it is that you do in your personal practices. But but think about that regimen versus somebody. <laughs> think about how fast your life would end if that's how you breathe. Like if you to be stimulated like that, to be moving at that kind of pace, you burn out quicker so what we're trying to develop is something that doesn't burn out in the same way <laughs> and and that's a different you know a whole different set of, of goals and you know a whole different mentality you know and so it's it's not about you know I'm, I'm gonna get mine you know and trying to you know I gotta I gotta rush you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna get mine it's like no nah, this, this is a whole different thing because they're because they're, they're because there is no finish line. I have to rush. I don't have to rush. Cause, cause I, I'm not interested in finishing anytime soon. So I don't need to rush. And uh, and you will see that time. And even if you know you you got your obligations and your family and your work and all this kind of stuff, but your definition of time is uh, is going to change. And you had to sort of allow it to do that. You know, you had to be sort of prepared for concepts of time and space will shift to the point where you where for me time doesn't really exist like with the concept that most people have of time uh, I don't I don't relate to it like that and, and it frustrates some people that know me because they don't I just don't I don't function on that kind of that that kind of schedule of we got you know do this and that and this you know it's kind of like it's it's a for me it's just a more natural kind of a kind of approach because I'll do things very uh, you know improvisationally you know 
And, uh, and I had, so I have to push myself. Even something like this, where I'm like, okay, let me let me schedule, let me schedule this. You know, let's schedule a Q and A session. Uh, you know, ahead of time so that we can put the word out there. That that's I have to push myself a little bit to do that because uh, it, it's it, it's it's uh, it's not that it's not that hard, but it's uh, it is a bit against the total naturalness of of how I really operate. You know, which is sort of in the moment. Uh, and so, so yeah, so that is, uh, that let's get, let's get to some, some more of these questions here. I think I will, uh, I think I'm going to, I'm going to skip to, I uh, got a bunch of questions here on the, uh, posted up on the, uh, on the page here on mucusfreelife.com forward slash Q A eight. And uh, several questions that I got are asking about things that happen at the be toward the beginning of the diet. And uh, uh, Tamika asked, what top, top five aspects of the mucus diet healing system should a new beginner of the system focus? Uh, I love your mission. It literally breeds life. Thank you. And uh, so, okay, so that, that's... It's a good question. So, f so five aspects of mucus's diet healing system that a beginner of the system should focus on. Uh, my my five are uh, understanding the transition. So that means you know read, reread, go back over those lessons of the transition. Try to try to get inside of it mentally even before you do it just really consider it and look because you, you don't have to follow those weeks verbatim uh, but they demonstrate the methodology and the sort of gradual mentality that will help you along the path so uh, so for me un understanding transition is uh, is number one. Uh, number two, I probably had to say, uh, probably had to say lemon juice enemas, uh, because that is the thing that would kick everything up a notch. I mean, whatever you're doing, and you know, it just, it kicks things up a notch. Uh, again, for the detail stuff, uh, Spirit speaks. Is uh, there's a lesson in there that I have that's sort of a step by step, you know, one through twenty of exactly what to do uh, in terms of, of a lemon juice enema. So that's uh, so that would be number two. Number three, I, I'd have I have to get continue studying the texts. Uh, like, I think that's important enough uh, to really be on there cause to, to keep going over the Eretz texts. Uh, if you got, you know, Spirit Speaks, you'll go over that. But just, just sort of keep reading through. Uh, you know, I went years where uh, I will still do it to this day pretty much, but I, I was even more regimented in the beginning where I've read every day from the mucus's diet book like some people read a bible I was every day I would you know go through and this is after I'd already read it several times but then I would just pick a chapter and maybe I, it's while I'm doing my enema and I'm sitting there on a toilet and I just I read a lesson so I'm reading every day and every time I read it it has new life it has new meaning and it's one of those magical books that has that sort of uh that changes with you as you change it changes every time you read it there's new things that pop out at you today just talking about the exer just talk about the exercise section and me never having really talked much about it and then going and and looking at how much exercise is actually talked about in the mucus's diet I'm I learned more hmm. I learn something every time I read. I open up the Mucus's Diet book. I learn something new. Yeah, man, that's so you true. Know, there's new new stuff that pops up. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, <laughs> you know, I have the experience of looking at stuff that I wrote, and I'll be like, oh, you know, and, and it'll 
waking up, uh, uh, up other things, you know, because I have my concept about a lot of the stuff I write. I mean, it's, I'm, I feel like I'm sort of channeling something. And so I can kind of come back to my own stuff sometimes and be like, okay, <laughs> you know, okay, I, I, see, I see where my head was at at that time, and, I, and, and it'll put something together that I'm experiencing now. And then I actually could build on uh, what I was thinking of or wrote of, of that time. So, just so for me, um, I'm an advocate of studying, uh, of, you know, being studious, but thinking for yourself. It's not about memorizing a bunch of facts. Like people that get into nutrition theories, they want to try to memorize a lot of details about, like, well, such and such has this much fat content and it has this much calorie content. And if you eat it like this and you do this, and I'm like, I'm not talking about that kind of studying. I'm talking about what's the history of the protein theory and should we eat, take it seriously? What's the history of the vitamin theory? You know, who's cashmere funk? Who is uh, at water? You know, the like who these figures that like that's what I mean by study. And study in such a way where where it, it's freeing, it frees you up because I'm not telling you to not believe in the protein theory. I'm telling you to study its origins, and if you still think it's a good idea based on the way in which it was coined, the concept was was developed, and, and then has developed over the years. If you still want to believe in it, then fine. But study its history. Study the history of these theories that we are told to just not even question. I'm basically saying question everything uh, along those lines of the, the whole mainstream concepts of what they've tried to feed us, you know, but just, you know, just have that, 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 that thirst for understanding and knowledge and, and studying and, uh, and analyzing, you know, I'm a big kind of, you know, a, a, you know, analyzation of, you know, my, my elimination, analyzation of, uh, the, the you know energies you know how how things change if 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 I'm fasting in a certain environment how, how is that experience different from another environment or fasting around certain people uh, or uh, or being not around people you know just all these dynamics there's so much stuff to sort of interrogate and experience you know as you're experiencing you kind of have this inner dialogue with yourself because you're getting to know yourself on this whole other level when you're going down this road. And uh, so that would be number three, would be study. Uh, number four, I would say, so we got number one, understanding transition. Number two, uh, lemon juice and distilled water. And, and number three, uh, continued study to keep your consciousness in that level. Uh, number four... I would say, uh, hmm, that's good. Those 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 <laughs> those top three are 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 are, this, are serious to me. Those, those I could almost do the list with those three because every everything kind of to me sort of comes out of those three. Um, so uh, so so what what would you say would be number four, uh, Tony? You got some something, something in mind? Uh number four. Oh, man. I'd look at I'm I'm what I'm looking I'm gonna look up now is my my frequently asked questions section because I actually kind of uh well either the frequently asked questions or the uh, because I mean in in some sense uh I might say experimenting with different mucusless menus uh, that could be a good one just because like as you develop your palate there's so many I mean I found that there's so many things that I haven't thought of uh, I just recently got into cauliflower pretty heavy uh, the steamed cauliflower and I don't know. It's just like these certain things, and once once you get it under your belt, it's like you know how it works on your system, and you can come back to it when you need it. So, you know, depending on if you haven't been vegetarian before, you haven't haven't been on a plant based diet, 
I would say a big thing is start start trying some different vegetables and you know cook some different mucusless vegetables, see what they're like, prepare different kinds of salad. Uh, I guess just experiment with like mucusless recipes in yeah. some sense. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, experimentation. That that's that's a good one. Yeah. Yep, because that's and the that's short exactly. facts, you know, experiment. Right, right. Well, and then maybe, yeah, and then number five probably probably should be fasting, uh, yeah, to sure. yeah. uh, to to start rationally fasting. I would say. For again, for beginners, I like Eric's suggestion of two, two to three day yeah. juice fasting. That's the methodology. Is uh, you know two to three days. Where he says you, you there's this read the section on fasting drinks. He talks about you you can either have you can have juice uh, fruit juices if you want to be more aggressive. You can have just lemon juice. Uh, there's even an option to have vegetable broth if you're doing a longer fast. I wouldn't do that in a you know two or three day fast, but uh, but that's kind of the thing to look at. You know, read that section on on the fasting drinks. Uh, you know, Eric's methodology really doesn't. Uh, water fasting is something that sort of comes down the road or is not really recommended for most people within the context of Eric's work even though he himself did you know 49 day long water fasting and, and and that kind of stuff and a lot of people kind of assume that Eric's talking about water fasting but he's methodologically he really focuses on juice fasting uh, and then lemon water is sort of gonna be your more you know either lemon water or straight lemon juice with no water uh, that gets a little bit more intense but as far as a beginner, that's more advanced. You know, I, what I would say for the beginning, just um, t in order to do that, you want to sort of clear out space in your day where you have a couple, you, know, you have some time, and uh, uh, where you have a couple days where you, you know, you don't necessarily have to work or, you know, do whatever, and then, you know, get into. You know, you'll get into into the fasting days, and then you'll read through those rules that Eric talked about of uh, you know rules for fasting and stuff. But you know, I wouldn't try to do it a lot. I would say it, even if you did it two times a month in the beginning, just if you're transitioning and you say, okay, I'm going to get two two three day fast per month. Uh, but the main thing is you transition into it. And out of it very well, and so that's why you can say, well, two days. But if you transition into it by having more of a raw mucusless kind of like right before your fast, you know, go a day or two being totally raw and mucusless, and then you hit your your juice fast, and then when you break it, depending on where you're coming from, you uh, if you're if you've been eating a lot more meat and that kind of stuff, and and, and you're a little more toxic than break it with vegetables as Eric suggests. But in most cases, you've been cleaning yourself for a little while or you're not that toxic, you can break it and eat fruit for a day or two and then get into your, your vegetables. Uh, you know, but, but I always suggest sort of a, a transition when, as you're breaking it, you know, as you, you sort of transition, uh, transition down. So, uh, so yeah, so that would be our list of five. I'll say them one more time. Uh, uh, understanding transition, you know, so really studying the transition, then the lemon juice enemas, then studying and deprogramming in general. I guess, I, I, yeah, when I say study, you know, I'm kind of talking about, like, it's, it's really a deprogramming and a de-brainwashing process that you do really by some of the stuff that they taught you at school, just these, just methodologies of interrogation, in, interrogate you know critical analysis of ideas and concepts, um, you know, and challenge these ideas. You know, everything that goes through your head is a concept or an idea, and uh, and it can be challenged, and. Uh, and so that, you know, sort of getting yourself into that realm and expanding your mind. And number four 
uh, experimenting with different options, with exploring different items, uh, mucus mucus lean items or mucus less items, or you know just just having that kind of uh, uh, attitude in the beginning to find uh, things that work the best for your physiology and your body. And then number five, uh, getting into some some good fasting and uh, and get getting your feet wet with with the fasting levels. So yeah, so thank you for that, uh, Tamika. And uh, there's another question. It's kind of about the beginning, and we've talked a bit about this in some other videos. Uh, so, I, but. It says, this is uh, uh, Sister Z. Hey, Professor Spear and Bro Tony. Greetings from London. In your experience, what were the best ways of dealing with and getting through eliminations, emo emotional, physical, etc., that you had at the beginning stages of your transition? Also, how long had you been practicing before you started talking about or uh, mentioning the system amongst friends uh, and family? Uh, thanks. So, uh, so this is a topic we've talked about several times. Uh, you could go back to some of the older videos where we, there's a video talking about the number one reason why people fail at the mucus's diet, or number one reason people quit practicing the mucus's diet, uh, which I basically said was due to social pressures, due to not learning how to deal with social dynamics that you're forced to deal with when you practice the mucus's diet healing system. I mean, there's nothing that will build your character more than practicing the mucus's diet healing system in a world where pus and mucus is the is the rule of the day. Where pus and mucus is the law of laws. Uh, so as far as uh, so you know, so and then we there's another video we talk about talking about specifically emotional eliminations, uh, and and so so. But just to t try to do a quick and dirty version, I would say, for me, it was uh, everybody has to sort of do f find their way with this, uh, and you know, me and Tony had talked about this a little bit because. Uh, uh, you know, we like to l look at this, these dynamics of the d different types of personality. You know, my, my personality is a little more fiery. Uh, if you're into horoscopes, you know, I'm a fire sign. So um, my approach in the beginning phases was a little bit different than people that might have a more water kind of personality. Uh, with me, I just developed this attitude like lone wolf that just it, it, my concept of me when I started practicing the mucus's diet was basically what what would it be if UEP Newton or Malcolm X started practicing the mucus's diet like what <laughs> their the the intensity oh, <laughs> of their of their resolve and their attitude and so I went to school because it was it's that experience of just sort of being by yourself and stuff and 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 I'm a little bit more comfortable being alone, and and because uh, I grew up as a you know kind of only child, didn't have a whole lot of people my own age around, uh, and 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 just ha didn't always have access to children my own age to play with and stuff. So I was one of those kids that, that had to be real imaginative and create imaginary friends, and and I developed this kind of internal dialogue and stuff. So for me. The prospect of losing everybody, uh, you know, friends and family and all this kind of stuff that that it it, uh, it it was it was daunting. And I'm not saying it was it was nothing that was comfortable, but I know I I had less of an issue with that than a lot of other people that I know. You know, so I just sort of developed this attitude that was basically sort of a hardcore kind of, uh, you know, like like. Like in like this in the hip hop mentality, you know, you can hate me now, but I won't stop now because I can't stop now. You know that that kind of attitude where you can hate me, you can disregard me. I don't care because I don't need your approval. You know, I don't want your approval. I don't even want you in my presence. You know, I, I got I got intense like that a little bit, and uh, and even in school, 
people used to say, like, I was just that angry dude walking around, you know, just, just sort of had this attitude that, and, but what it was was a, a defense mechanism for me because it kept negative energies away because at the, at the foundation I was kind of fragile, you know, going through. So I didn't need chaos. I didn't need to be attracting negative energy. And, and once I sort of got over that initial thing of wanting to, sometimes in the beginning what you want to watch out for is trying to share and talk about the mucus's diet for the sake of convincing others because if you're able to convince others, then you feel more validated. And those are classic social dynamics of feeling as if you have to gain acceptance from your peers. I, I squashed that as soon as I could, where I didn't, in order to do what I needed to do, I couldn't rely on the support of my peers. And so that meant that I couldn't be seeking acceptance, because if I did, then I was going to be, you know, really in trouble. If I was going to try to, and, 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 and you, yeah, I did in the very beginning, you know, I might have threw things out there to people or, you know, I hoped that people would see what I saw in the diet, you know, and I could just tell them and it would just be easy, like, hey, check this out, read this book, that it could be it, it, that, that open, you know, and sort of that, that loving, just a open kind of thing. But I got hit with so much resistance and so much hatred just be like, hey, check this out, you know, I'm, I'm losing weight, I'm feeling better, check, you know, it's just very, uh, you, you know, you have the best intentions, and then people cuss you out, or people kind of just give you the, the nastiest, uh, you know, responses that you, that you could ever imagine, people that you would never even think could give those kind of responses, so to kind of, you know, do, do that kind of thing at you, and, and it can really hurt if you're sensitive and if you're looking for validation from other people. And so that's what I mean by this is a character building project like none other. Because in 2015, chances are you're not going to be surrounded by a community of people that's going to support you practicing mucus diet. Online, there is. You know, that was one of my missions was to create at least an online community and, and support system for people practicing a diet. So that's that's in place but as far as you know your friends and your family and the stuff people that you associate with around it's uh it, it might not be there and if you're really getting into the mucus's diet you you might not be welcomed into certain vegan communities or certain raw foodist communities because you're breaking away from some of those dogmas that are the foundation of those communities because now you're questioning and challenging these theories. You know, you start your challenge, you're, you're questioning melanin theories, you're questioning blood composition theories, you're questioning, you know, white blood corpuscle concepts, you're questioning nutrition, the very foundation of nutrition theory, the uh, very foundation of protein theory. And, uh, and so. You, 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 you would probably not, you, it, you would be nice if you could fit in with those communities, but unless you're a leader of it, you, you might not fit in, 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 even in some of the vegan areas and stuff. So I don't, I, I don't lie and say that this is, you know, a walk in the park, but it is, I, I like doing the diet at this time period in history because it, it is pushing me to, it has pushed me to develop things that I wouldn't have developed if there was a, a larger following, if there was a larger sort of social acceptance for what we do. You know, the, the, so the, the, it's one of those things of, you know, look at the good, you know, there, there's going to be good and bad or whatever of anything if you even believe in the concept of good and bad. Uh, and so in my case, this, the, my experience really pushed me to develop things that, I wouldn't have necessarily wanted to develop by myself. That's one thing that this path pushes you. It, it finds your weakness and it pushes on it. Like whatever your weakness is, if, if your weakness is uh, that you're too attached to friends and family in a, in a negative manner, then you're going to be pushed. You're going to be challenged on that. You're going to be challenged to let go of 
those attachments. If it's not that hard for you to let go, but maybe you turn a little bit sour and you're not as unconditionally loving to humanity, then you're going to be pushed on that. You know, and I had a I had a bit of that experience where I got a little bit too far out there, and I needed to come back. You know, I needed to come back with love, and and and, and needed to transcend the negativity so that I didn't have to be like that. So I didn't have to sort of, you know, be be to myself and something and stay away from me. Like just be scared of me because I don't need your negativity. <laughs> you know, like I, I would have, I had that kind of thing. So I had to overcome that. That was my cross to bear per se in terms of my, my path. Um, so everybody's issues are going to be different, but it, it, it's just about are you ready and willing to do what is necessary to overcome these issues and, and, to, and to move forward. Uh, there's other some of the other videos we talked about Sedona method. I, I don't want to talk too long about that and, and get into that right now, but uh, I will be doing a post about that at some point. But you know, so there's I like to call these things a lot of stuff we talked about is ancillary therapies, animas, herbs, exercise, massage, acupuncture hypnosis, uh, meditation. I mean, I could make a long list of what I call ancillary therapies. And used at the right time and in the right way, they can be very useful. So Sedona Method is right on that list of something that was very beneficial for me. I know uh, 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 Tony's been studying it. He's been having a lot of breakthroughs with it and stuff. And so that, in terms of emotional elimination, that's uh you know that's one thing that I always suggest you know to check out the the Sedona method but you know e either way it's uh there there's uh, you know there's gonna be challenges and you just gotta kind of go through in terms of just deal just overall until you really get in to the diet you know I I develop techniques of how to deal with people so. What I would do is I like I don't want to be unkind or, or or anything and just but I always underplay what I'm doing. You know, I always underplay the diet. Even though diet is like my it's my thing. That's what I'm excited and passionate about. I want to tell everybody about it. If I'm talking to somebody on the street and I the I let them bring up diet because diet always seems to come up in the conversation and so you know, we'll be talking about whatever, 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 and then they say something about diet or they offer me some food or it's going to come up. You don't have to bring it up. <laughs> diet will come up in the conversation. And then I just I just politely say, oh, well, no thank you, or say, oh, well, you know, I'm kind of on this other, you know, special diet. You know, I just underplay it. Like, I don't even want to talk about it. You know, like so what that does is it, it's, it's sort of a humble response so you don't come across preachy. They can't. They can't accuse you of being preachy like they like to do with, with the plant-based people that are overzealous and sort of putting things in your, in your face. They can't accuse you of that because you didn't bring it up. You didn't, like, somebody had to pull that out of you. They had to, like, well, what, what, you know, but you're using mystery to kind of, it kind of pulls them in. It's like, well, wait a minute. Well, what's, what's this diet? Everybody wants to hear about diets. So, like, well, what are you talking about? Like, well, you know, it's kind of this plant-based thing that I've done for a lot of years, you know, I lost a lot of weight, you know, now with me, I have a hook, because I can say, well, you know, I used to be 280 pounds, and then, I, you know, I lost like, you know, 100, 110 pounds, and, you know, in six months, and, you know, and so after that, they're hooked, and I pretty much can say what I want, and they're going to listen attentively, but, you know, but even if I, there was times when I didn't even use that, just because I, I actually experimented with a lot of different things, talking to people, just because I wanted to find some of the best methods, just to find, just to be able to talk to people about the diet. So, uh, so even if I don't use that as the hook, if I just say, well, you know, it's just, it's, it, but I've always found it underplaying it is really helpful. Right? So, well, it's, you know, it's just this plant-based thing. Make the other people, person that you're talking to, ask questions, because very rarely do I find somebody that's not. That, that doesn't ask questions because you sort of cap captivate them. 
uh, and their curiosity. They're like, well, what, wait a minute. So what, what is it that you eat? Like, well, then at some point I said, well, I, you know, I practice something called the Mucus's Diet Healing System by Professor Arnold there. And then, they're, and then they're, and, and and we could leave it there, but you know what? They won't let you leave it there. They want to know. Well, what what's the Mucus's Diet Healing System? Who's who's Arnold there, man? I've never heard of that. It's kind of kind of mucus. What's what's that? And then so then I sort of have like a little something that I've tried over years that I find that works. Well, I'm like, well, you know, it's a this was one of the it's, it's the earliest vegan diet really and and I can use that word vegan now because everybody knows what it is you got former presidents and famous actors and rappers and things that are pushing veganism so it's it's a, in a society based on worshiping celebrities the cult of celebrity now that there's celebrities that say it's okay to be vegan it's all of a sudden okay to be vegan uh, before the celebrities, you were sort of out on a limb by yourself saying, well, you know, plant-based diet, and then it was real weird. But as soon as a celebrity does it or a celebrity talks about doing an anima or something, all of a sudden that's fine. So, okay, if that's what it takes, fine. So, well, you know, it's just, it's, you know, it's kind of a, it's an, a vegan diet, although there's a lot of things that vegans eat that, that I don't eat. And then, you know, and they say, well, like what? I was like, well, so, and at that point, I basically will, if I want to keep talking, I could, but what I would rather do is direct them to some place where they can get the information. So, again, you have to get, you you have to, like, people have to want this information, have to work for it a little bit. So, you don't have to just give it, give it all away right, right up front. You say, okay, well, if you're interested then check out this website. You know, go to mucusfreelife.com, and there's a lot of articles on the mucus's diet there. You know, or uh, or send them directly to the book. Like, well, if you're really serious and you're interested about this book, there's been a lot of people that have healed all kinds of illnesses with this system. If you're interested, read the book. And then after you read the book, if you have more questions, then then we can talk. And and you can and then you can move on with life like right there you don't you don't have to be talking about it more you just like if it, because a lot of further discussion might be a waste of time and futile if they're not even uh, if 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 they're not willing to you know buy a ten dollar book or, you know a fifteen dollar book or go online and and download it for free. You can find you know different versions for free and stuff. If they're not willing to do it, just a little bit of research, then you're probably not going to want to invest a lot of time, and it can actually be draining to you to spend a lot of time trying to work with them and tell them you know if they're just learning about the diet and stuff. So so that's my recommendation in terms of just you know kind of dealing with people. You can now, especially now that the community is there, you can always relate, uh, refer people to. Either the website, the book, or the forum, Facebook forum. You know, you just say, well, if you wanted more information, check this out, and uh, and, and that sort of takes the pressure off of you, and uh, and 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 then makes them have to do something if they want if they find this this path interesting and, and want to know more about this, and so that you know keeps the dynamics uh, really. Um, you know, just just right. You know, I've noticed that there there is sort of a you know there there is sort of a push pull kind of thing where you can make the you can make the process of talking about the diet with other people very smooth. You know, if you sort of know how that dialogue can go back and forth you know and it takes a little practice a little time and then as you ex go through the experience then uh, you know it becomes easier just based on that but so uh so that's uh that's what i, ha I had to say about that and uh tony you have anything to add with this yeah, uh, um in brief going along with everything that you've said um i would just say give yourself like learn to give yourself space. Um, and what I mean by that is, like like you said, Spiro, when you're talking to somebody, you don't have to tell them everything you know. Uh, that's really not how you get the information across. Uh, 
but it can also wear you out as well. And so that's, to me, I'm just putting that in the concept of giving yourself space. Like, don't, don't try, in the beginning of practicing, think more about, like, your own health. Don't think, and, and I'm saying this because I didn't, I didn't always take this approach, uh, but instead of, like, expending your energy on everybody else, really think about this in terms of, like, I'm going to get myself together and uh, so if you do talk to somebody about the diet, just be casual, you know what I mean, and uh, go with the flow. Um, and an another part of giving yourself space is like if, like let's say you have a lot to do during the day, give yourself some downtime in the evenings. You know, uh, when I first got into the diet, like I was still – trying to go like, you know, Friday nights, it's like, oh, Friday night I'm going to go out or, uh, or, you know, this whole idea of like, oh, it's the weekend, so I'm going to do all this other stuff. And just think about your life in terms of like, these are the things that I have to do. And then these other spaces of my time, like, let me really conserve my energy and, and, and use that energy and transfer it to the diet, you know, do a short fast, eat mucus list, do your enemas, take all that energy that you have to like convert the people that you know, or, or just be out in some craziness, convert all that energy into like healing yourself. Um, and, uh, you know, you're going to go through some healings that you never thought about. You know, so you might think, oh, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, I'm just doing this because it seems cool or whatever. Like, whatever's on your mind, you're going to go through some healings and just bring it up, you know, just allow it to come up and give yourself that space. Uh, there's going to be a lot of doubters. There's going to be a lot of people who do, don't, don't agree because they don't know any better. Uh, they don't know anything. So... Don't ask their opinion. Don't, you know, I mean, casually it's okay to go with whatever your flow is, but generally just focus on your practice because um, this thing is serious. It's not just, it's not something that you are just going to advertise, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's so serious that, Get yourself in the door first, and then come to the mucosus diet community, play a role, try to be a part of it, and then, you know, think about, like, how can I share this with the world, you know? So that's how I would deal with, like, the sharing it part. Um, and, and, yeah, you know, just with, with me, it was like, um, with the eliminations, you're going to, it's almost like you're going to face the eliminations before you can know how to deal with them. And that is the process. So the eliminations are going to start and then you get a chance to learn about all the different tools and things that you can use to understand what you're going through, uh, it's going to happen simultaneous, you know, so that that's my advice is just every chance that you can just give yourself a little bit of space. Like if you're feeling stressed out, uh, I guess when I first got into the diet, if I got stressed out or was just tripping on some old stimulant running through my blood, I would always want to go and like wear it out in the social scene, you know what I mean? Like talk to people and just be all over the place. And at the same time, it's like, oh, I'm trying to practice. Like I would say, I would tell people like, oh yeah, I'm practicing this diet. Nah, 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 nah. And just, you know, just wear myself out. And uh, in the long run, like it didn't, it didn't do that much. Like I could have been actually more beneficial to those people if, if I would have, been a little bit more discreet in the beginning, practice, and then shared it with them later. 
Like I, I would have had some tactics and now those individuals, they already have a preconceived notion. Uh, they think they know what I'm doing and whatnot. And there's not the, there's not the same avenue to share the diet. So yeah, so I would just always be discreet and think in terms of, of, of giving yourself the space to like really go deep, you know, like. Well, that's that's why I'm sa that's why I'm saying focus on referring people, like get in the yeah, habit exactly, exactly. of referring people to you refer them to me, refer them to, to the website, you know, I will, you know, that's what that's True. there for. That's why I made and put all that information out there for free. You know, you can read for several days and, and there's still stuff to read. Um, so yeah. put it on them. Like they have to exactly, be willing exactly. to do like you, you don't have to be, you don't have to share everything and, and what you're going through and all that kind of stuff with them. Just if, if you know, get in the habit of just referring people to the website, just say, man, Hey, just would just check, check that out. If you got more questions or you're interested you know, just just go visit mucusfreelife.com. There's a frequently asked questions section. There's a, uh, you know, if there's any particular articles that you want to refer them to, you can do that. I mean, just normally a lot of people go to the frequently asked questions. A lot of people find their way to the, the, the mucus forming foods and mucus free foods lists and that kind of stuff. But just put it on them because you don't yeah, need that right. pressure. You don't need that stress. Just Hey, check out the you know check out the, the website and if if you if 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 your questions aren't answered there then then uh then 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 have them ask me the questions because uh, I very rarely have somebody after somebody's gone through stuff on the website and they've read both of these books they've gone through the annotated mucus diet and spirit speaks I rarely get a question that's Ba that it's basic, like a basic question that that's not covered uh, in in those books. You know, by the by the time a question comes after you've studied all these materials, now you're asking questions based on your experience and new experiences, and there are new questions. You know, there's new issues that uh, that come up, and so that's what I like to. Because I love those. You know, I love questions that are like, okay, well that's new, and uh, okay, well, that's like because because you're we're, you know we're building. And uh, you know, taking things to to higher levels, and so, uh, so yeah. So hopefully that that's helpful. There. Let's move on to the uh, next question here. So Danessa asks, <clears throat> "Hello, Professor Spira. I hope all is well. How would a typical two-day fast plus enemas look like? I suppose the previous day uh, one does uh, not have the the last meal or salad, uh, so that the colon is freer." To the, for the first enema in the morning after the bowel movement, right? Then sips of water, lime water throughout the day, an extra rest or sleep, and another enema before retiring. Next day, the same enema in the morning, fasting during uh, the rest of the day, and uh, the, the day one breaks the fast, having a salad early around 4 p.m. Uh, for having a bowel movement before going to bed. So again, with the uh, the fasting process, there's a lot of options. There's a it depend based on where you are physiologically, uh, what it is you're trying to do. You know why are you fasting? I always like to have people you know ask that question to people because sometimes people sort of just fast to fast, and I'm like, no, you you know why are you fasting? Um, it's 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 always good to really. Uh, to, you know, to really know why you are fasting. And uh, if you go over the Eretz uh, section where he says rules during the fast, you had like number one, clean the lower intestines as well as you can with enemas at least every other day. Of course, we say do it every day uh, when you're fasting, uh, you know, in our opinion. But um, before starting a longer fast, take a laxative occasionally, and by all means, the day before you start to fast, and and it's not a laxative; it's like an unnatural laxative. We're talking more about the natural laxatives. Eric talks about that in the book, or just a lax, more laxative diet, or a diet that the a mucusless diet that keeps things moving, uh, but that goes along with what you were saying, Danessa, where you 
you, you want to b before the uh, before the fast you don't want to be eating a bunch of you know, mucus forming foods and mucus lean stuff you want to sort of transition to a point where you're eating mostly fruit you might still have a salad somewhere maybe you could have a salad in the, uh, like the day before a fast have a salad in the afternoon and then fruit at night you know and then uh, or in the evening and then maybe do do an enema at night or definitely on the, on the fast enema first thing in the morning I would say uh, after and I always say you know doing enema after you have a natural bowel movement I never have problems having natural bowel movements I always have natural bowel movement then I do the enema after uh, after I have a bowel movement um, so then uh, I say you know if possible remain in the fresh air day and night you know just being outside uh, you know get a little bit of sun take a walk or exercise uh, uh, or some other physical work only when you feel strong enough to do it if you're tired a week rest and sleep as much as you can uh, on the days that you feel weak you will experience such days when the waste is in the circulation. You will find that your sleep is restless and uh, disturbed, and you may experience bad dreams. This is caused through poisons passing through the brain. Doubt, loss of faith will arise in your mind. Then take this lesson and read it over and over, as well as other fasting chapters, and especially lesson number five. And uh, number six, whenever you arise after laying down, do it slowly. Otherwise, you become dizzy. Uh, and yeah, that, that kind of thing. Then the next section, we talk about fasting drinks. The fanatic fasting enthusiast drinks only water. They think it best to avoid any trace of food whatsoever. I consider light lemonade with a little honey or brown sugar or a little fruit juice the best. Uh, drink as often as you care to during the fast, but in general not more than two or three quarts per day. Uh, the less you drink, the more aggressive the fast works. As a, uh, then he says, as, as the changed vegetable, vegetable juices made from cooked starches, vegetables are, uh, are very good during longer fast. So I wouldn't get into that right now for the, the two or three day long fast. And, and that's kind of another, another discussion. But so with the, the, Two or you know the two to three quarts per day, uh, that so that's the sort of the classic lemonade fast. But what I did a lot of was sort of the apple lemonade. So I wouldn't be using the honey or brown sugar or anything. I would use fruit juice. So I'd have f five five apples with one or two lemons, and it's kind of a natural lemonade. But you can use this same principle of the two to three quarts per day throughout the day really to any almost any fruit juice in terms of you know if it's sub acid fruits with the grapes and the uh, apples and melons and stuff you know I mean my favorite thing to fast on these days is if I can have good grapes uh, and just juice juice of grapes that's I mean that's just heaven for me to fast and uh, if if I can manage to get good oranges, which is hard to do in the states, to get tree ripened oranges that aren't too acidic and and uh, sour tasting, then that that's that's great. Uh, that's a, that's a little bit more of an aggressive. You have to watch that a little more in terms of what it's doing inside you. Uh, don't want it to with the citrus stuff. You don't want it to eliminate and loosen too much toxicity into your bloodstream too fast. You know, so you want to kind of Kind of watch that, but yeah. So I would say, with the the with the juice where he talks about the you know the lemonade that kind of thing again that can be any any kind of juice. If you want to be more aggressive and more sort of right down the middle with the classic, you know, lemon juice, just have some water with lemon juice in it. Uh, you can sort of play with that to see where where you are physiologically. Uh, with that, but it feels like if you you know you need a little bit of that that sugar stimulation, then just have a little bit more water. Uh, I've done instances where I sort of had watered down lemonade, where I had a little bit of I had com combined water, apple juice, and, uh, and and lemon juice sort of together, and and, uh, and that was kind of a different experience with the uh, with the watered down juice and. 
So there's a lot to check out there. But in terms of just from from day to end, from the beginning to the end, I would say you transition into it so that you're more along the lines of eating mucusless and eating fruit uh, before you start it. Then you begin just with your enema. An hour or two after that, you can start drinking your liquids throughout the day. If you get a craving, oftentimes dinner time that your body's use starts to get those acids. That's why people always ask, well, why do I get so hungry at night? Well, it's just we've been conditioned to eat late like that. You know, you get hungry at that time when all these, these acids are starting to kind of secrete into your system and you uh, and especially with no food there it's even more it's kind of like ah you know and so you can either you know take something to drink or you do do an enema and uh, sort of and when you do the enema you're gonna that's when you're gonna start to see loads of old stuff coming out that uh, you know where you're two, you know, two or three days into the fast, and you still have this stuff coming out, just like you've been eating. And you're like, wait a minute, I haven't eaten anything, but I got pounds of stuff coming out. Um, so, uh, so that's why I say, then when you break it, you just, uh, I would, and, and in your case, because with someone that's a little, anybody that has a relatively clean, cleaner system, I recommend breaking the fast with fruit. Uh, and, and Eric talks about that, you know, the different breaking uh, protocols. If you're more toxic, then yeah, break it with vegetables. But in most cases, and with a lot of people that's been transitioning, even for a little while, it's okay to break it with with some fruit, and then and then eat fruit for a day, or eat fruit for nothing but fruit for two days if you can, and then or eat fruit for a day, and then fruit. And then, then, then on the next day, you're back into your, you know, fruit in the afternoon, and then have your salad that evening, you know. But the main thing is, you don't want to break your fast and then have a vegetable meal, and then now you're eating a bunch of cooked stuff, and the, and you know, you just, uh, you know, toast shows up, and you start having these sort of that that binge reaction. You don't want that, you know. So being very gradual and just transition yourself into the breaking processes is uh, definitely what you want to be doing. And, uh, so that is what I had to say about that. And uh, let's see, let's keep going here. Uh, this is Demetrius. Uh, peace and love from Demetri. Can you please talk about overeating while on a 100% whole fruit diet? I've been on it for a couple months, and I didn't make any huge jumps from sad straight to 100% fruit. It was already all raw and very low on mucus. The last thing I quit uh, has uh, Humerus and Hulva, uh, both sesame products, uh, chickpeas too. Uh, also, about 10 days into eating just fruit, I also stopped making smoothies. I've... Uh, uh, of having them whole and always and almost always one kind at a time mono uh, I don't have any craving I mean I don't miss anything I'm happy and managing to socialize too uh, however I have days when I eat tons of fruit also when I uh, uh, got out of the smoothies I got addicted to dates uh, that's gone now so I'm um, only worried about the amounts that I'm consuming. Peace and love. So, so, th so that's that's interesting because I I never really had, just with my physiology, I never really had problems with overeating fruit. Uh, vegetables, yeah, yeah, I can. And, and, and vegetables, the further away I get from mucus-free foods is when I start overeating. So I get into the mucus lean stuff and. You know, I definitely have to monitor myself when I start get treading in those areas because I can get, you know, I can get kind of strung out on the, on the mucus and stuff. But uh, as far as the fruits, in, in my case, I don't know, I just never, I, I would eat, I would kind of eat the amount that my body really kind of craved. You know, I, I just would, 
you know, you just kind of have that that intuition. Uh, so, so as far as you know, I, I'm not super concerned with you, if you're eating a lot of fruit and you don't feel the problem is to me over uh, my definition kind of my definition of overeating is eating to the point where you don't feel good anymore you know if you, if you're eating a bunch of bunch of fruit and it's starting to make your stomach feel funny then you know that's a problem now the other thing to maybe consider is what kinds of fruit are you eating uh if you eat something like apples that's a good if you're overeating fruit apples are a good thing to go and like do do eat apples for a couple days you know just just do an apple you know apple fast or something because there's you have to work a little bit to eat the apple and by the time you you know you chew it and and, and you're kind of eating it and stuff you maybe you know two or three apples and because you because it's kind of forces you to eat it slower than other uh, other fruits, it might slow you down, and you might be sort of satisfied after you you know eat two or three of them. With bananas, that's the thing is is they can you can kind of suck those down kind of quick <laughs> before before you know it you you you've eaten a bunch of them unless you kind of you know watch yourself. Or same thing with the dates because they don't really. You can eat a bunch of dates because they they don't really have any water content. They're not gonna sort of signif uh, notify your stomach that there's something going on to that you're like okay go I'm full. You know it's not really gonna make you full. Uh, but like I said with the you know apples that kind of slow you down. Uh, for me, I don't know blackberries. I never could overeat something like blackberries. I could eat. I would maybe have six or seven blackberries, and that's a meal. I'm good because um, they're so full and rich with with stuff going on in there. Um, so, so I would say that just I would say to not worry too much about it if you're getting to a point where you are over overeating because your body is actually actually sort of eliminating or you're sort of craving foods or you're craving mucus or something then maybe it's it's time to step back off the 100% fruit and you take and, and if you take a step back and you get into your salads and you kind of get in your transition then when you take a step forward again into the fruit realm you should have way more control and and your senses will be tuned. You know, sometimes it's just I would just call it just hitting a reset button. It's just boom, you hit the reset button, take a step back, and then when you take that step forward again, you have a lot more control. You know, and so so between hitting the reset button and finding some fruits that sort of force you to slow down and to not overeat them, because uh, I was I just never I don't really hear a lot of people saying that they overate. Apples. I mean, as I don't know. I mean, I guess you, I guess you could, but it's after about five apples, you're kind of, kind of done. I think, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, most of the time, you know, two or three apples, and you're pretty good. I mean, that's what I had today. I ate uh, uh, around two o'clock. I had uh, had two or three apples, and then uh, I did have I did have a banana. Later on, I had a banana. Uh, what did I have? Yeah, banana, some applesauce. Yeah. What kind what of uh, what apples do you like? Uh, it it kind? changes per season. Uh, yeah. From like, I was eating Honeycrisp from maybe December to last month. Then uh, and those were those were like the the tastiest. Then uh, then I got then the Fujis right now are sweet. Uh, galas are getting on sale, but I don't know. I kind of kind of gave up on galas. I mean, you know, two two years ago, galas from 2008 to 2011, I was you know I did a lot of galas. I you know, was was juicing galas and eating them and. But then now those are starting to taste lame. 
Uh, when I first got into the diet, uh, Red Delicious still tasted okay. Uh, but then they started right. tasting like little little water things, little sour waters, and uh, they don't got really no taste to them anymore. I still like the green, uh, green Red Delicious. Um, so you know, so there's that whole realm. And uh, for those of you that are the uh, the CB followers, and you and and I hear like, well, what about the hybrid and that kind of stuff? I don't, I just don't deal with that you know a lot of us in the mucus diet that's not our focus our focus is mucus forming foods because there's really no there's no fruits and vegetables you know all fruits and vegetables for the most part are some kind of hybrid or some kind of mutation I mean yeah there's things that humans have sort of cloned and created themselves uh, but overall for me the folk the focus is on mucus forming foods you know what's mucus forming uh, something that is by definition hybrid is not necessarily uh, gonna be mucus forming and uh, so that's just not something that I really you know you, you gotta pick your spots it's like you say you pick pick your battles uh, with this thing because you can't you know, with all, with there's you know so all the different opinions and all this kind of stuff and restrictions and uh, you know all these different things, and and for a lot of people that find themselves trying to take bits and pieces from all of these different people and all these different perspectives, you get a headache because you can't. Right. Some of these things don't necessarily like you would think that they should go together, like where you could take a little bit from over here and a little bit from there, but a lot of things aren't really uh, conducive to each other, you know, the, the methodologies and, and the things. And so, uh, so that's just a word out there. Cause I, as I know there's a couple people that saying, but what about, you know, those type of apples or hybrid or something? I'm like, I don't, I just don't really get too deep into that. And, uh, cause for me, the fa yeah. fast, the fasting is the thing, you know, fasting right, is right. where the rubber meets the road. E everything else is transition. You know, everything else yeah. is about transition. The uh, the rubber meets the road at fasting. And so that's that's where you're going to get your transformation and your mental clarity and your whole, that whole next level stuff is going to be in the realm of the fasting. And so whatever gets you into the fasting states by way of transition uh, uh, in terms of the mucus-free realm is going to be you know, A-OK -okay in my book. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess my my thoughts about the the fruit is, um, you know, I had an experience where I overate some cantaloupes one time, and that was just, I mean, it wasn't pleasant. Uh, and that was probably, that would actually be the only time I've ever, I'd ever say I overate fruit. Um, so... You know, with Dimitri, it's like um, it would just be interesting to know like what all he means in terms of overeating, um, and and is there like is is he saying that there's certain discomfort? No, he, he says he he feels all right. Really, it's just he's just right, worried about if right, he's overeating. Yeah, yeah, um, that's the way it can, right. And I would say that if you feel fine and everything. I would just focus on the two meals a day um, instead of, like, you can have your fruit however you want it as snacks, but if you feel fine eating fruit and you're, like, doing your thing right now, I would just maybe have, like, a little bit of juice in the morning, fruit meal in the afternoon, and then a fruit meal in the evening, and... Uh, and, you know, you could even say, like, if you do want to have a snack in between, preferably, like, do some juice. You know, you could do some juice in between. Uh, and that would just keep down the quantity of the of the waste that would be building. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think a lot, like, when, when, I'm tr when I'm dealing with my transition, I find myself thinking a lot in terms of, I want my fruit periods to be as clean as possible. You know, that's, that's something you said, Professor Spear, when, when uh, 
when we talked in the beginning of my transition and and that's really stuck with me even now is like if I'm gonna be eating fruit I it's not even so much about the quantity like it, it is in part about the quantity but really it's like I just don't want to mix a whole bunch of things so you know I just try to focus on that like if I'm going to have if I have a fruit that I'm that's really ripe and I'm really looking forward to having it then I'll I'll actually try to make sure I'm clean enough to eat that food it's almost like you put it on a pedestal and it's like wow there's some really ripe uh, you know whatever there's some good oranges or whatever I'm getting let me um, let me just drink some water or have a little bit of juice like a couple hours before and a couple hours after like let my body really enjoy this ripe orange meal uh, so I guess that's that's how I end up thinking about the fruit is just it's it's a it's a real it's a real thing and um, the other thing is like I I really I know that I can become like I can live on mucusless fruits like I know that's a potential and so I don't I don't have to jump into the idea that I'm a fruitarian mm, like mm. I'm 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 going there you know what I mean I just feel it so um, if I have a fruit period or whatever like I don't have any resistance to getting off of it and and mm -hmm. accepting like yeah. okay I'm maybe let me cut down the quantity like if I'm eating a lot of bananas and stuff like that like I'll go back to uh, a raw salad as, as, as almost a step up like if I'm in a mode where I'm like eating all these bananas and in between I'm having fruit meals like that's cool for a period but I don't know you know what I mean where it's like that raw salad or whatever like can come in and you can cut down your quantity cuz cuz I just really want to refine my fruit mode like I don't want my fruit mode to be this like stimulated like overeating mode that that's fine as as a as a period or you know exploring fruit diets and whatnot um but really for me it's all about transition you know so you don't even have to have the mentality of I'm a fruitarian and I'm trying to eat fruit like all you have to do is have that I'm a mucusless diet practitioner mentality and, and and really just keep looking at your transition and, and how you're going to get somewhere you know so that that's how I tend to think about it yeah 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 well well said alright so let's Get to a couple more questions here. <clears throat> Sean asks, uh, hey, Prospera, I would love to hear some wisdom of kidney filtration, your experiences with how long it took for them to turn on and start filtering, importance of kidney filtration in contrast to cleaning out the intestines, uh, the consistency with the amount of sediment in the urine and certain uh, possible if any things that could speed up or slow down the, the, that kind of elimination etc I also enjoyed the uh, short improv piece you did in one of the Q&A's and was thinking it would be a cool and fun intro to do a few minutes of improv pre-discussion to help stimulate the minds of and promote fluidity mm -hmm. of the listeners and, and those discussing uh, looking forward to another great Q and A tomorrow. Thanks and peace. So, so, uh, so yeah, man. It, well, I, yeah, I did. I didn't play today, but we. Uh, I did play the uh, little Fred Wesley. You know, so that kind of changed up the vibe a little bit to, to you know, ha have some music going on, and uh, and yeah, yeah, I agree. It's, it, the music is important in, in just that whole realm because uh, it it definitely. You know, you know, change changes up, just just the just the vibe, and uh, you know, creates a creates a, a space for you know elevated consciousness. Uh, but as far as kidney filtration, uh, the the two approaches 
that I find that work on one hand you can do the green drink approach and that's where you get into your uh, you know juice a lot of celery and uh, celery cucumber spinach you throw some beets in there parsley what everybody I, I know a million people talk about the juice and thing that's one reason I don't even talk about it that much because it's I don't like talking about things that everybody else talks about all the time. But they work. Uh, the green drinks can be good to uh, to kind of you know turn turn the turn the kidneys on, and that's a great point uh, that I talk about a lot one on one when I'm working with people. Uh, oftentimes, that, that kidney filtration is uh, is key. You know, getting the kidneys back uh, back online, as uh, as Morris said, and uh, you know, and, and Eric talked a lot about the kidneys as well. You know, he actually talked about lymph too. You know, and he kind of got into that. It just wasn't with the same clarity and emphasis that uh, you know that that, Eric, that Dr. Morris talks about. But in Mucus Diet, Eric says uh, when he's talking about the elimination of drugs, we say hundreds of cases have come under my observation where drugs taken 10, 20, 30, and even 40 years ago were expelled together with mucus through the, this perfect healing system. This is a fact of basic importance, especially for the practitioner. When these chemical poisons, after being dissolved, are taken back into the circulation for elimination through the kidneys, the nerves and heart are affected, causing extreme nervousness, dizziness, and excessive heartbeats, as well as other strange sensations. You know, so Eric had this understanding of you're filtering your waste through the kidneys and sort of the importance of the kidneys to filter this waste. It just didn't, like I said, articulate it in the kind of clarity and, you know, kind of where Dr. Morris, and that's why I think one of the most important things that Morris brought to the table was this analysis and understanding of the lymphatic system, you know, the venous system, uh, the lymphatic side of it, you know, and how that, that functions and works. But in terms of practical application, I find that the green drinks, and for me, it just would take really just a couple days of green drinks and, and my, you know, my kidneys will start sort of filtering better. But that's, that is a key. You want to, if you're detoxing, especially your, you know, your first 15 years of, of transition or detox and I'd say you you want to be at, you want to see sediment in your urine you you want to see this sort of this filmy mucusy looking white kind of stuff sort of at at uh, in, in your urine you know sometimes you won't necessarily see it unless you uh you know you you urinate in a jar and something and let it kind of sit there but uh but that is uh you know that's something that you definitely want to that you want to see. Uh, I have experimented with Morris's uh, kidney formulas, and they they are uh, they are good. You know they they are effective. They they do help. Uh, you know I've I've actually experimented with almost every formula that that Morris has, and uh, so so I you know so I know how they work. And uh, and they and then so those protocols work as well. Uh, and, and and he's right in saying sometimes if, if you have really chronic kidneys, it can take it can take a long time. You know it can take months sometimes. But uh, if you if you get into your green drinks for a while and you really focus on those things that sort of promote that you know promote that uh, the kidney stuff. I mean when you start juicing beets. Uh, along with the the green drinks and stuff, I mean you're you're working on it. You know you're doing that work because there's there's really only those couple options. Um, then the other option is going to be then your fasting level and fasting with less liquid. The more that you sort is that that kind of forces your system to squeeze a little bit more. Like the less liquid you take in. When you're fasting, the more that your system uh, sort of contracts, there's this this fasting is this contraction process. So as it's contracting, 
it's uh, it's squeezing out the paste. It's squeezing out the tox the toxicity, uh, the toxemias and things out of your tissue system, out of your venous system. You know, it's a squeezing process. So with less liquid, it's going to squeeze more, and that that sometimes can turn on the kidneys. Just just fasting at a higher level with a, with a little bit more aggression, or you know, lemon juice fasting. Uh, and that and that kind of thing can can sometimes uh, promote that. So you know, so those are those are sort of the the tools that that uh, that I've seen that works for uh, for that level. So yeah, so that's a good question. Yeah, I like you know, yeah. that's thing is important to focus on uh, talking more about the kidneys. Yeah. Um, would you say that the mucusless diet essentially uh, like works on the kidneys because I found that uh, maybe it was like I, I can't say for sure but like a couple months into my transition uh, well it was really like 12 months in I think I hit a spot where my kidneys started uh, eliminating a lot more um, but but generally like Anytime that I've checked, my kidneys have been filtering. Um, would you say that it that pretty much the mucusless diet does that? Like, because a lot of the stuff that that I hear people um, suggesting suggesting for eliminating waste from the kidneys, like a lot of that's part of the mucusless diet lifestyle anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's a good point because just. Just eating some salads, you know, just some raw combination salads, uh, that can create a an effect where the kidneys, you know, kind of where you see some sediment or you know you see some extra acid waste uh, come out. You know, the the key with that is that, that that does tend to happen more when you when you're more sort of on the more strict raw mucusless salads. Um, you know, and fruits and things, but but the, yeah, the whole process of the transition, and particularly the higher levels and the fasting levels and stuff, it's all promoting, uh, you know, kidney regeneration, um, and uh, so so yeah, yeah. But those, but but if you're really, if you're if you're working with somebody that say has got a chronic illness and they gotta like, you gotta go now. You know, you need to get the, the kidneys going, uh, you know, as soon as possible. That's where you can, you know, green drinks and, you know, maybe herbal formula here and there. You know, that's where that, that can really help to kick it up a notch. So I think we're almost done with most. There's a couple couple more questions here. We'll try to do these uh, quickly. So we got a question from Joseph. Uh, he's talking about see the transition. I, I'll go down to his where he said to clarify here. I want to know if serious conditions such as appendicitis would still be avoided on mucus lean or raw to four if the level of eating will keep the the body from becoming that inflamed and congested. Um, I would say in that case. When I'm dealing with folks that have real chronic illnesses, that's where we have to start talking about being a little more aggressive with the transition and getting to the higher levels sooner than later. So if I'm working one on one with somebody that I know has those pro that those issues, I'm probably gonna get you into the mucusless levels and the raw mucusless levels and the fasting levels and uh, maybe a little couple little herbal things or something like that. We're going to get you into those levels a lot faster. Um, uh, just because it's it's necessary. You don't want to be walking around with that pain all day and dealing with that kind of stuff. Now, in terms of if, if you have if you have an itis, <laughs> any and I'll just say any itis, uh, that's where you're gonna you're gonna come at this thing with a di with with an attitude of of, 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 I would say, you know, you, you want to be maybe not as, as fast as, say, Dr. Morris will say, we get you, like, into the fruits tomorrow and, 
and you know and that kind of stuff you still transition like I said I like to see people at least transition for a couple of weeks uh, before if 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 you have a, a pretty intensive illness and and but you, and you want to get to the point where you can really deal with that with some effective fasting and some effective fruit eating uh, periods but yeah when you're when you're dealing with the itis I don't know. I don't know about that mucus lean. I would be in the I would be in the mucus free level. But this is again, this is where we're going to be different because I would tell you, this is where I would say, I would rather see you eating cooked mucus free. So me, so lightly steamed vegetables uh, with with the salad, baked zucchini with the salad. Uh, Baked acorn squash with a salad, you know. Just I would rather see you have cook, uh, 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 cooked, combined with with raw mucus-free foods, which are gonna create less inflammation overall, versus having raw mucus lean. Uh, and you know, and so well, I guess if you stay raw till four, then you would have, then that implies the. You know, that that concept, <laughs> like I gotta say, to me, it's just you know transition diet. Uh, it, that's like just the classic mucus diet. But so, so in that case, I would say I wouldn't. That's why I would say step away from like like you know that raw to four concept and say okay, I I wouldn't mess with a whole lot of mucus lean. You know, the I would be in the realm of that cooked mucus free. And that's gonna, you know, kind of give you that 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 uh, you know a better chance. But in terms of an itis, see, one of the points that is it's it's hard to teach and explain, uh, especially to people that are kind of excited that want to like, man, I want to do you know do these different things. One of the things that you do is as you start to get on the path, you let your body lead the way, so you don't have to sort of say okay in the month of May I am going to do a 25 day fast like you don't you don't have to make that kind of declaration just stay in the transition but what will happen is if you have some latent illnesses if you have some kind of weakness or you have some kind of itis that pops up that now your body is is basically giving you permission in many cases to go on ahead and be more aggressive, to go on ahead and fast and heal that up. And so when I start to see itises or I see the eliminations or I see the bronchitis and the this and the that, that's when I'm saying, well, well now, now, we're, now your body is giving you permission to be aggressive. Your body is giving you permission to fast and to, you know, sort of go down that path. So when you start talking in the itis realm, I'm... I'm not really talking about mucus lean anymore. You know, the only time I'm talking about mucus lean when we have itises involved is when you have a craving for meat or you have a craving for dairy and you need to eat something that's going to satiate you to keep you from going back into the meats and the dairy. Uh, you know, but in terms of you know, tr you know, trying to really deal with those i that those itises, I I say, definitely within the realm of raw mucus or uh, uh, just just you know the cooked and raw mucus list, that's about as far as I would go. You know, I would try to avoid the mucus formers if I if I could, and then if my body was gonna let me. Uh, you know, kind of, kind of let me fast do it. Now I know in in your case, because I'd read from other things, you know, you had been dealing with like the smoothies for a long time and had the teeth issues and stuff. And so, you know, so you've sort of been working for a while. So, I, so I'm getting the sense that maybe you you want to try to find a way to take a step back uh, and find some transitional options that that can help you out. Now I would ask you, well, have you tried baked banana? Uh, you know, have you tried baked apple, uh, you know, or, 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 or steamed uh, apple or, you know, like that, that, that could be a, a level that can sort of turn on your digestive system, get you used to solid food again, 
uh, yet it's still not as aggressive, but it's also not leaving behind mucus like an avocado would or like, you know, getting into some nuts or some, uh, or, or whatever, even some of the, like the breads or the toast or something. You know, if you can deal with something that's going to slow down your elimination and satiate you, uh, but at the same time, you know, kind of, you know, find something. I mean, there, there's nothing softer than uh, if you want to talk about stuff that's going to be easy on the teeth and stuff. You know, baked banana uh, is going gonna, is gonna to be something something to check into. But, uh, you know, so, so those are some of the steps that you could kind of look at uh, in, in terms of, you know, move, moving forward and trying to find some different plateau points that are, a step away from fasting because then you can always get back into the fasting levels but you know you take that step back and you visit the stewed fruit the stewed fruit realms and and, and that kind of stuff and uh, so yeah so I mean if and, and see, then there's later some more discussion here uh, I meant just mucusless or very very mucus lean diet with some cooked meals yeah. So yes, yeah, so I kind of explained that. Just to me, the the mucus list is what we're when you're talking about the itis is you you want to be talking mucus less, uh, but that could could include the, the cooked and the raw mucus list. But depending on how bad the itis is, I mean, if the if the itis is really bad, then yeah, you want to be 100% raw, and then you want to get into your juices and uh, and you know just sort of keep keep going up that ladder until the itis is taken care of. Uh, okay, so I think we got one more question here. Let's see if we can if we can hit this, and then we will uh, wrap it up for today. Well, actually, before that, I wanted to uh, okay. So for the for the Spirit Speaks, I said a long you know several hours ago is that Spirit Speaks giveaway. So for those of you that have hung in there and you've been been listening this whole time, or you or you have come on. What what I want what I want you to do is, um, uh, for a chance to win the autographed copy of Spirit Speaks, uh, go on to the the page mucusfreelife.com forward slash Q A eight, uh, where this is streaming live, and go in the comment section and write. Uh, v equals P minus O in the comment section. So to, to leave a comment, you have to like leave your, your email address and put, put your name uh, so I know who you are. But, but type in V equals P minus O in the comment section. And of all the different people that put that, I'll put your name in a hat and I'll draw... Uh, the next time that we meet here in the in the Q and A, I will draw, and uh, somebody will win a signed Spirit Speaks, and I'll be talking more about this because I'm gonna actually do the official release. I never officially released this, although a lot of people have found it on Amazon and stuff. I've never officially released the paperback version, so uh, I want to do that next month, which basically just means I'm gonna be doing some promotions and. You know, trying to get folks to to help me out by going on and leaving uh, leaving reviews and and that kind of thing. But once once it's once it's out there, it's uh, it's out there. But but yeah, this is uh, uh you know this is this this, this is uh it's got some stuff in here. There's some there's some stuff in <laughs> Spirit Speaks. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so. Uh, so yeah, so here, okay, here's the last question, and uh, let's see if we can deal with this. This is uh, Chris, and says, hey, Professor Spiro, I love what you do. I'm a huge fan of <clears throat> you and Arnold Eret. I have a few quick questions. Can you talk about, in Eret's book, he talks about uh, things such as starch and grains are white and make pasty slime, which in turn makes our complexion pasty and pale. Uh, can you talk about any transformations you have seen from people in their complexions and talk about this briefly? Also, can you talk about how to over, over, overcome hunger pains that are hard to overcome? Thank you and peace. So we kind of talked about the hunger hunger pains uh, earlier, pretty much the whole discussion about 
binging and uh, and just all of that. I mean, uh, you know, a, a little bit of enema goes a long way oftentimes with, uh, with that kind of thing. Uh, so you want to neutralize, just neutralize those acids. So anywhere from doing an, an enema, drinking some juice, drinking a green drink, um, you know, eating a mucusless meal, you know, th- you know th- this kind of thing. If you're trying to fast, then I'd say uh, you, you get the hunger pains, you know, just doing lemon enema. And uh, you know, keep keep on moving forward. But uh, but as far as the first part you're talking about, and uh, yeah, in, in my case, uh, I noticed that as I that I got into the mucus diet, the sun just became one of the best things in my life. Just to go in, in the sunbathe, to be in the sun. Uh, I mean, I spent out in the fir- first year or two practicing the diet when the spring and the summer came around, I would spend at least several hours in sun. If the sun was out and it was warm, I was just out there just with my shirt off as much clothes off as I could have and still be, you know, I was in a public space at a university. So I couldn't be uh, nude, which is what I would have preferred. But, uh, I just got as much sun, you know, I would lay out for, for an hour on, on one side and then I'd turn around and, and, and let it soak into my back. And I just was, it just really, really was attracted to the sun. I mean, I just get, just wanted to be in it as, as much as possible. If I could take my homework out and do stuff out in the sun, I did and practice out there in the sun. And, uh, so what happened is that accelerates the healing process and the elimination process. Uh, and it's another thing that I don't see enough people really talking about, you know, the importance of being in the sun. And of course it's hard because a lot of people live in environments where six months out of the year it's, it's cold or nine months out of the year it's cold and no sun and stuff. But those months when the sun is there, you want to be in it as much as possible. Now, in my case, I went from growing up. If I was in the sun a lot, uh, I could I could burn a little bit. Like I could get you know my my shoulders and stuff could could maybe uh, uh, you know could 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 get a little bit chafed or something or something. And you know, and I, I had times when I when I peeled and stuff. And um, but once I got into diet, though, that was gone. You know, I never. No matter how long I'm in the sun, uh, I can never burn. Um, you know, and, and I basically my it's it's like the, it's it's almost like the sun absorbs into my skin differently. Uh, and and it makes sense because in the case of when you're really encumbered with mucus, it's, it's it can be kind of uncomfortable to be in the sun because it's like you're you're it, it's almost like it's a it's like you're boiling, boiling your mucus, you know, boiling those acids. And so the sun is hitting your skin. You're like, you know, it's just because it's uncomfortable because you're kind of, you know, boiling this toxicity up. Uh, But as you eliminate that and your skin starts to sort of become uh, an absorber of solar energy, you become a solar, like your skin is now a solar panel and, and it can absorb all of this energy and, uh, and and there's no you know there's there's just no repercussion it all absorbs in and in physics if you, you study physics that's kind of what that's one of the principles where they you know they talk about the the way in which light absorbs into uh, you know surfaces that are you know that are a little darker you know or cleaner it absorbs right in, you know, and so that was kind of my experience where it was like, as I, as I got cleaner and, and there did go through times where, yeah, if I did eat some mucus, you know, my complexion got lighter or if I was eliminating something crazy, then, uh, you know, I, I would look kind of scary, you know, I'd look sickly and be like, people would be like, man, are you okay? You know, but then I'd fast and get through that and all of a sudden I would get darker you know and if I'm fasting in the winter time I can get a couple shades darker you know and that and so for me that's just normal like I don't even think about it anymore you know but some people see me and be like be in the middle of the winter time and they're like are you what are you doing a 
Did you go to? <laughs> did you go down to, to Texas or somewhere? Are you, uh, you, know, are you sitting in uh, uh, you know, in sun, uh, uh, whatever, whatever they're called, the little sun. What is what's they called? Uh, yeah, those little um, tanning, tanning, tanning booths. I was gonna yeah. say sunbed. Yeah, you know, I was like, no, <laughs> and uh, that kind of thing. So it's 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 a real piece. It, it's definitely a real piece, and. Uh, yeah, and, and 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 everybody's skin will become closer to what it should be you know, as you get cleaner, you know. Hmm. And it's, it's really no mystery to it. It's just, you know, uh, the quality of it. It get it get baby soft. I mean, I love yeah. that, man. I love that part of the diet. Just that my my skin got uh, yeah, just so crazy. soft, right? <laughs> and, uh, and I mean, that's you know, crazy have, when. Uh, when I do an enema or something like that, and my skin gets like obviously softer within seconds, you know, or or after I'm like, I'll, I might have a fruit meal and I've just been really clean lately, and then that fruit meal just makes my skin so soft. It's crazy. Right, right. You know, and and then and then it's. Uh... <laughs> Uh, you know, a situation where all of a sudden you have something that's salty or you eat some mucus or something right. and it's like you lose your uh you know you you lose all of that and then you you get to the point where you you get tired of losing that you don't want to lose that anymore you know you don't want your right uh, you don't want to lose that baby soft uh skin and and that sort of nice complexion and you just uh, and, and so for me, that that sometimes is something that kind of keeps me going. Like, okay, let me just keep on, just keep on getting cleaner, because it the uh, skin is kind of like a mirror for that. You know, it kind of sh really shows you, like, okay, well, that's you know, st stuff is changing, stuff is getting cleaner. You know, you can see it uh, on on the on the uh, condition of the skin. And I always, I mean, when I first got into the diet, I would have people come and, and people would want to feel my skin and stuff you know they'd be like oh man it's kind of baby soft or I'd show like my stomach which is kind of is kind of a baby soft and, and, and it wasn't like that before <laughs> and you know but it's like it's like baby it's like baby soft skin you know and people would be like oh what do you what do you use like some kind of lotion or something I'm like no I don't put no oils on my skin I don't want that just sun you know why not you're gonna use why not use sun? Yeah. Why use oils and lotions and all this stuff that clog up your pores? And I know that there's a lot of folks that are gonna be like, oh, I want my no. Get some sun. You know, let 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 sun be your lotion. And if you want to really be a a real you know real student a uh, uh, real eritus you know and you really are uh, real into the study then you're going to do some some uh, some air baths and some you know some water baths you get you a little basin of distilled water and go out in the sun and you know d dab your hand in it and you know wipe your body down open up your pores and then sit out there in the sun and just 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 let 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 the pores be open uh, uh you know so so these are things that a lot of a lot of people don't net, like. I don't hear people talking about them, like, and really experimenting with them. I like hearing about that. You know, I want to hear about your sunbathing. I want to hear about your air baths. You know, I want to hear about the doing the exercises out the book. You know, there's so much more than just the diet part. And uh, even though we yeah. talk a lot about the transition, because I think the the juiciest and most artistic part, uh, and the most important part for people to start wrapping their mind around is the transition diet. But I try to throw these other things in there because they're in they're in there to check mm -hmm. out. Uh, so you know, sunbathing was a huge part for me uh, of, of my transition, a very important part. Uh, you know, you know I, think, just, um, I, I, I think I think uh, Israel created the um, the enclosure. That Eric talked about, so you can actually do the like full body sunbathing. Mm -hmm. So that nice. that was pretty cool. He had made that post on the Eric forum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that now. You say that. Yep. And that's and that's what I'm talking about. You know, just mm -hmm. that that kind of seriousness of you know really, really, really checking this thing out. Check it all out. 
there's a lot of stuff in this book. It's a small book, but there's a lot of stuff going on in there uh, to check out. And you can you can definitely uh, you know yeah check because because that, that's the thing because everybody's like well I'm gonna be raw I'm gonna do this it's like well, okay be mucusless and you know and, and spend five hours in the sun fast and spend five hours in the sun see and and we're gonna see where you're at because a lot of people couldn't handle that. You know, if you're and if your adrenal glands are down and stuff, then then sun is really, you know, if you, if you <laughs> can really be a challenge. You know, so there's, but but it, it's a it, it's a thing. And again, we're not. And some people say sun. You know, I talk about them sunbathing, and then they start talking about, oh, you're getting your vitamin C. Like we don't even think like that. <laughs> it's about sun. It's about this the 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 sun is like the ultimate. And it's, I mean, it's just this, it's just like this detoxification tool that's right outside. It's just detox mode. You know, if you fast and you go and just lay in the sun for several hours, I mean, now, now we're talking, you know, because now we're talking about elimination because people want to talk about right. well, aggressiveness. I got always say, we can, we can talk aggressive. Because people want to, you know, try to. Well, I'm being aggressive and all this kind of stuff. It's like, okay, well, let's let let's talk aggression in your transition. It's like, okay, so as they say, you know, and I'm, I'm not even I'm not recommending to do this, but I'll talk about things I did. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, four months into a juice fast, start doing nothing but lemon juice, and and then do lemon enema with thirty lemons. And then sit out in the sun for three to four hours a day, you know. Now, now we're getting somewhere. Now, you know, we're we're doing something else. Uh, that's that's going to open up a whole different, you know. We're we're not even having when you're talking, you know, that long into a juice fast conversations about salads and avocados and all that. Like that's not even in in your reality anymore. That's like talking about drinking Clorox bleach. I mean, that's how. When you get into that thing, that that level, it's it's, it's it's a whole other thing. It's just it's a whole other level of existence. And uh, uh, you know, but just because you touch on that doesn't mean that's where you're gonna stay forever. That's why we call it the transition. You can experience some things if your body allows you to explore those realms, and it's meant for you to do that. Because uh, again, I don't promote. And I, and I try not to even talk about these things because I don't promote long-term fasting because most people need to be reined in. A lot of the people I work with, they need to be reined in because they're trying to do too much too fast in terms of getting into the, the fruits and the raw foods and all that kind of stuff. And so most people need to take a step back and slow down and, and that kind of thing. But uh, with, with, with that said, you know, I... I never tried to do those long fasts, but they were, they came out of me practicing the system sort of, you know, religiously, really being into the transition and the system. And then when the opportunity came for me to start fasting, it was my, it was body led, you know, my body led that. And so, I didn't set out to say, okay, I am going to do a long fast and I am going to start today. It was I didn't plan it. It was I had a crazy elimination that forced me to fast. So I fasted. I think I did a I might have did like a 14 day dry fast. Uh, it was just so much mucus was coming out and just uh, and I was just laying in bed, not wanting to do anything. It was just going through. You know, everything is inflamed all over my body. And we're talking, you know, just just crazy elimination. And so that I had got in the habit of whenever I start going through elimination like that, it's time to fast. It's what logical, you know, just it's time to fast. And that was and the elimination was so crazy, I didn't even want to drink anything. And so that was sort of my first dry fasting period. Again, another thing that I don't promote. But my if your body tells you to do it. It, it, your mind isn't a part of it no more. What a lot of people do is they think, like, wow, that sounds like that's a high level. Let me, I want to do a dry fast or I want to do a water fast. It's like, 
I never thought like that. I always let go and let my truly let my body lead the way. And and, and, try, and once I got into a space where I had sort of cleansed myself enough where I could where my body could be more intuitive, then it was like okay. And and then you learn to read the signs. And so you going through that kind of elimination, you don't get scared and go, oh man, I better eat something. And so I I didn't you know. I mean, there's there's instances where you're going to want to slow it down, but I had I'd been there a couple times and had slowed it down in the past, and so I knew, like, okay, this time it's safe for me to just plug on through. And so I just plugged on through, and uh, and when I got to the other side of, like, those 11, 12 days, I was like, man, I'm feeling good now. You know, the elimination, all the mucus stopped draining, everything was cool. And uh, that's another thing to think about. I mean, it was draining not for two or three days, but for for you know a couple almost a couple weeks of going through a couple boxes of tissues every day, and this was a couple years into the diet. And uh, but once I got to the other side of that, I saw that opportunity, and I took it because I was like, I could keep going, I could keep fasting here. Like I'm fe- I'm feeling this, I felt it, you know, and I kind of knew I was like, okay, well this is an energy, there's a thing going on now, so let, let let me take this opportunity and keep and just keep going. And, uh, and, you know, and it was a sign of the time and what I, it was what I needed at that time, physiologically, mentally, and spiritually, I needed to go, I needed to do that. But it came after really being dedicated to the transition and not beat myself up on not trying to, to incorporate these dogmas of like, I didn't even know about raw food ism, you know, I didn't even think like that, you know, it was all about Eric's transition diet. So I was just applying those principles, but it was my body that led me into that space of like, boom, they, okay, you've cleansed yourself, all this stuff is drained out of you, and uh, if you want it, you can do it, and so it was on, it was on. and uh, then the next year, I did the same thing, and then the next year, I did the same thing, so three years in a row, I did six month long juice fast. And then on the fourth year, I was starting to transition off of it. So I did a four month long juice fast. You know, and then that was my my last of, of that. Then after that I got into doing other stuff like months on fruit, uh, fruit period uh fasting and uh you know, and I could talk for days because because this was for I dedicated myself to this study into this transition. So I've done so many different, you know, that's that's where my knowledge comes from. It comes from experience and then I, observing and talking to hundreds of other people that have either tried to practice a diet and failed or do practice it or getting into it, you know, so I just have all of this understanding uh, of, of what's going on, you know, what the potentials are and all this kind of stuff and then having been experimental because that was just part of what I was supposed to do. You know, in order to you know, hopefully one day be able to maybe pass on a little bit of that and help some other folks with their, uh, you know, with their eliminations and, and on their path. But uh, you know, so I just say that to just put things into perspective. And at the same time, you know, even after all of that, I can I can still go back to some mucus lean stuff. I can still. Uh, the main thing is my body just doesn't permit me to stay there very long. So if I take a step back and have, if I get into into some eating modes and stuff, and I go right, I go back. But and I and I don't stress about it, and it's not a big deal to me, and because I'm practicing the mucus diet healing system. Uh, the main my main thing is everything is gradual transition and grand gradual transition out. I don't like doing anything where I go from one extreme to the other overnight. And that is one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they'll do, okay, I'm going to, they'll, they'll try to push themselves too far. I mean, I did a, a month on all fruit, but then a crazy craving cr- comes and then they fall back and they binge in on insane combinations of stuff. And in some ways, you you could almost say that's inevitable, but instead, in, in, in the, like like the falling back and the relapse process and a little binging here and there and all that with the mucus lean, it's gonna happen. But wouldn't you rather it happen 
if you go from eating mucusless and then you sort of go and, and you have this little binge period on mucus lean as opposed to having a month eating fruit and you hit a hurdle and you fall down and now you're eating all this this mucus forming foods you know that that is what creates so much chaos with with people and you know with, a, with what a lot of people go through uh, you know, and it kind of gets into something that we didn't really have time to talk about it. I don't, I don't know if I should really get get too deep into it, but there is a question about uh, that. It was actually another question with Joey. It posted up in an emotional detox group that I thought was kind of interesting about um, transition diet in the point of no return, and 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 that's. The the message that I have for a lot of the folks that are that I think are maybe going a little trying to go a little too fast too far too fast is there is what can happen is you get to a, what I call like the point of no return. And the point of no return is a little bit different from what we would call the fall because I reserve the term the fall for people that have practiced the mucus diet for like twelve to fifteen years. And then you get to a point where all your weaknesses start to start to come out, like stuff that that did not didn't get weak just within the first couple of years. You know, there's certain things that wait a while. And uh, but if you don't really transition over a long arc period, and you get super heavy into fruit for a long period of time, or or the juices, or you know, trying to do these really long 40-day water fast or whatever like that, what can happen is you get into a state of no, no point of no return where you're sort of in this perpetual physiological hell space where nothing you do is going to, it feels good. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you're, you're, you're real high up on what you're doing with the fruit or, or the drinks or whatever, uh, juice and stuff, and but all, but everything is sort of out of, out of balance in you, and a lot of weakened, uh, 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 you know, weakened glands and all. You know, you can get real detailed with that kind of stuff. But there's just all these things have come to the surface. These are weaknesses that you had that you would you would have would have had to deal with anyway. But instead of dealing it sort of dealing with them kind of one thing at a time, as you can kind of do. Your body, body intelligence on a transition will sort of decide what order it wants to work on things as you transition. Instead of sort of doing it over the course of 10 to 15 years, you've brought on all of this physiological karma on you today. And point of no return means now you're, you know, you're, you're, you're dealing with this thing now. It's like, okay... Now, now, and, you know, I don't have no other choice but to, you know, work, you know, just kind of work and suffer through uh, the process. And that's why I spend so much time talking about transition because I've seen too many people go through that when they didn't necessarily have to, you know, in my opinion. You know, they didn't necessarily have to go, but they were, they were oftentimes really deep into the uh, you know the 100% fruit sort of do almost but dogmatic. It's one thing to be like 100% fruit, but it's another thing to be dogmatic with it, where you think you can't heal outside of that realm, or you, uh, you know, uh, you know, just 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 kind of that that overzealousness, or not being realistic about where you are physiologically and how much toxic waste you have, and and how much care, as Eric said, has to be taken with some of these cases. And so, uh, it, with with most people, the 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 transition, you know, just dealing with a, a gradual transition is fine. You know, when you start talking about more uh, chronic illnesses, we have to, you know, have a little little different conversation. But uh, but but overall, that's why I talk so much about and try to emphasize the transition because uh, you you don't want to get to that point and overturn too quick. It to me it makes more sense over a period of time just tra transform your body, transform your mind, allow it to happen. Your body will start leading the way if you get out of its way, and you sort of apply 
the principles of the transition, but at the same time, get out the way. And your body sort of starts leading you along. It's like, okay, we'll do this. It's like, okay, we'll fast now. Okay, break it fast. Okay, eat mucus lean. You know, it's, it's get re, get real intimate with uh, with your with your body. You know, and it'll sort of tell tell you what to do. Now, if you've already gotten to that point of no return, you're sort of in this mode of you know really dealing with. Or sometimes people come to the mucus diet and they're almost in that state of uh, either if it's a chronic illness or it's you know it's a whole you know endocrine gland system that's 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 shot or whatever you know then then it's it's just there's a lot of work to do and uh, and but the principles of the transition still apply but in in a lot of those cases you have to you have to stay higher into the uh, you had to sort of stay higher in the in the in the mucusless realm, in the raw realm, since you've already sort of, you know, kind of forced that hand. Like like now you have to now you have to kind of be at that level and and sort of drain off that physiological karma and you know and go through the process. You know, and then that's it's it, you know it's kind of where the uh, like the, the fall methodology that's why I say you know dr. Morris's stuff is really perfect for the fall you know for long-term practitioners of mucus's diet you practice the mucus's diet for 15 years and then all your weaknesses start to emerge now now it's a good time to uh, uh, to really get get deeper because you've already there's there's a certain level of mastery that you already have of getting in and out of fasting. By that time, you should be able to do longer fast effortlessly without having any mistakes, uh, of you know, binging mistakes and all kind of stuff. You get, you deal with all that. Deal with all that in the first several years. Um, but allow yourself, you know, give yourself that space to make those mistakes, to not be perfect with the transition. So by the time you get to 10 and 12 years, you are a pro. At fasting, you're a pro at the tra understanding the transition in the context of your body. Um, you know what the fruit levels feel like. You know what the mucusless levels are. You know what fruit juice fasting is. You know what dry fasting, you know, m maybe is. If you if you check that out, you would know your water fasting levels. You, uh, you know, know know the herbal stuff if you get into checking that out at all. You know, you just you you just become very knowledgeable of all these different levels of existence. You know, within the context of the mucus's diet, and to me, that's what it takes. You know, it's for the real long haul. It's important to really know all that's available to you and uh, and anybody else in terms of the healing system. And uh, so, so that's uh, so that's kind of my wrap on on that. The uh, point of no return is not is uh, you know is no joke. It is no no joke, and that's why we, we take all this very seriously. You know, you really really respect if you don't you don't respect the transition. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, I would uh, I would just add on to that, man. That um, you know, you made a really good point about using the first few years of your transition to really explore things um, you know and that, that's what I've been doing man just exploring like every angle that I can like I have a lot of questions and they can only be answered by me exploring you know like what's the real difference between water fasting and you know whatever lemon water or something like you know, and um, so it's just for me, like, this whole practice is just this this experience, and um, I, I would, like, I would just like to see more people, like, really accept kind of, um, like, okay, let me, let me have the first few years be me exploring all the different levels I can, you know, and it's it's not really about, like, really like um, I don't know clinging to the mucuslessness as a dogma it's like you get to that point where you're like I can do it I, I can be mucusless and 
you just start like analyzing it like crazy. Like that that's where I've been at the past few days is like this whole analysis has just been really aggressive for me, you know, because I've seen how the raw mucus list works. I've I've seen how the cooked mucus list and these different mucus lean options that I have. Um, it's like I know how they all work, and so now I'm starting to like look at something, you know, and it's just it's it's amazing. Uh, practicing the mucusless diet, man, is like my my favorite phrase right now is is the mucusless diet is an opportunity, you know, because it's it's not what is the opportunity, it's that it is an opportunity, you know. That's just that's where my mind's been at. It's like so many things come out of practicing it, uh, things that I could have never predicted, um, just ways, ways that my character is, is developing and, and um, the opportunity it affords me to, to have a developing character. Uh, you know, so, so we can kind of, um, like if you're not at a point of no return, uh, don't don't push yourself into it uh, because, like, I don't know about anybody else, but I know for me, my body moves faster than anything. You know what I mean? Like, my body is is moving faster in the transition than any other part of myself. The mind, the emotions, that that piece is all lagging behind, uh, and the the body is just like sprinting. Um, so I'm just like. It's really for me just the process of getting my mind around what's happening and, and you know, uh, like mucuslessness is possible. And uh, when, when, you, when you're a mucusless diet practitioner, it's like you represent an idea. You know, I was watching, I was watching a, a Will Smith interview the other day where it's like one of these inspirational clips and stuff. And, mm -hmm. He was saying, like, I want to represent an idea. And I was thinking about that, and I was like, that's exactly what the mucusless diet is. It's, it's You're representing something that is so, um, I wouldn't even say new. You know, it's, it's ancient, but it's new. And it's like, as long as you're practicing this thing, like, you don't have to live up to any expectation. It's it's all about you, yeah. Representing something, you know what I mean. You could be, because uh, I used to have this feeling when I first started practicing, like because I didn't really understand the transition all the way. So I was thinking in terms of like, I don't want nobody to see me eating a mucus forming food, uh, you know. And and now it's like I'm starting to, I actually have had fun like. It doesn't happen that often anymore, but when I do happen to eat mucus around somebody, uh, <laughs> to me that's funny. You know what I mean? Because it's like it, it brings on certain kind of questions and certain things, and that that's when you really get to talk about the mucusless diet. You know, so yeah, yeah, um, yeah. that that's where I'm at with it right now, man. And just I know that this thing is possible. Like I'm 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 bent on becoming mucusless and just like living on a mucusless diet and I'm looking at the conversation about the quote unquote raw mucuslessness and stuff like that man and I'm looking at it like like how are we talking about raw mucusless and nobody in the conversation has even transitioned to mucuslessness yet mm -hmm. uh, because I know I know from my own physiology that um I could be eating mucusless foods and all that, and just a little bit of olive oil on my salad is like a whole different game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So talking about taking out all mucus-forming foods is a huge... I mean, we're talking about that is such a big reality change. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? And so when we're talking about transitioning, we're not talking about just... Um, a hop, skip, and a jump. You know, this thing is like, like the transition diet is is so profound. It, it's um, 
it's an art form, you know what I mean, at, at its highest level. And if you're not down to to put in your 10,000 hours, if you're not down, uh, I don't know what to, I mean. I don't know what I don't know what the option is. <laughs> all I know is that the like the transition diet is not this thing that you can just jump past. You know what I mean? I don't I don't care who you are. Um, it's it's just that profound, you know. And it's not a lot of the people who are talking about the raw mucuslessness. They they're my my contention with that is that they're putting down the transition diet when the transition diet is so profound. Like it's not just oh you're on this junky transition diet and it's like you gotta tran you gotta become mucusless. No, the transition diet can become so profound that it's just um, like. Like there's there's uh, like in some cases, man, it's almost like somebody could be a fruitarian, quote unquote. They could be eating all fruits, and somebody on the transition diet could be way cleaner than them. Like it's it just it doesn't work by like what you put in your mouth today. Right, you right. You know what right. I mean? It's it's this long term thing. Uh, you know, so I just I just put the transition diet on a pedestal, you know, because if if somebody's gonna become mucusless or or really go somewhere, it's gonna be the transition diet, you know, because it's it's easy to learn about like fruit dieting, juice dieting, like all that stuff is static, you know, it's 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 non-moving, so it's very easy to know about. You're just mm -hmm. drinking juice. Uh, maybe there's a variation if you're having tomato juice or you're having pineapple juice uh, you know there's variations but really the transition diet is going to be the the mover and shaker of every level you know so that's my piece man I just been really yeah. bent on this, this idea that like I know I can become mucusless um, I had a, I had a period a few days ago actually where I was like I went through that period where you question everything. You know what I mean? It's like, is this thing possible? Like, can I become mucusless? And I was just really, really just thinking about that question really hard, man. And uh, I went through like a period of doubt, doubting, maybe like for like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, I was like thinking, uh, maybe it's just not possible. Maybe it's not Maybe you can't really live on a mucusless diet. Uh, like I just, I just let anything come into my mind, and then I like jousted with it, you know, mm -hmm. and really dealt with it, man. And uh, I, I know, I know we can do it, man. And it's, it's gonna be the transition diet. It's gonna be the, uh, it's gonna be the, uh, it's gonna be the transition, man. That does it. It's not gonna be, um, it, it's not gonna be just. Uh, an impulse, you know, it's it's bigger than an impulse. So right. you know, right. so that's <laughs> that's just where I've been at, man. It's just like I know we can do it, and and some of the discussions about raw mucuslessness they actually made me mad. You know what I mean? Because it was just like this thing is so much bigger than just trying to uh, just trying to be like you're you you're at the top of the mountain, you know. It's it's just so profound, you yeah. know. So I'm yeah. I'm just happy to be a part of this community, man. Because the mucusless diet is like the more I practice it, the more I'm like this is this is the master key. You know, what I mean, this is the key of all keys. You know, and so it's it's the real thing, man. Yeah, yeah. So yes, yeah, so there's one <clears throat> one more question there. It came up that I wanted to address. Uh, Brian asked, uh, my mother is worried about me doing daily enemas. She thinks um, I'm going to have problems with holding in the feces. Should I continue daily enema? You know, well, I mean, I, I can't answer you that just based on, like, I don't know any, anything about, you know, I don't know anything about your situation or, you know, your age or how you were eating and what you're eating now. And there's so many factors that would have to be, 
dealt with for me to, to give you specific advice. Um, in general, what we do is we talk about what we've done and what we, we're doing now and what other people we know that practice the mucus diet has done. And so there's a lot of us that that do daily enemas or did daily enemas and you know, there's some people that do them every other day. Uh, some people do them, do them less. Some people do them kind of by the, uh, uh, well, I don't say by the book, but I mean, Eric sort of, the way he frames the enema discussion, you can interpret it several different, several different ways. And so you, so there is uh, s certain things he says would, would kind of talk about doing it after, uh, you know, after a natural bowel movement, like every every bowel movement, you could uh, conceivably do an enema. There's it's one interpretation. There's others where he really emphasizes doing it when you fast and that kind of stuff. And so, uh, so I do recommend you know, check out Spirit Speaks. Uh, that the, the say there's several sections in here about enemas. There's even a uh, a section where I'm having a discussion with uh, Samantha, who was living with her parents at the time, and. So she kind of talked about, or, or I was, we were talking about what she was doing to kind of, uh, you know, do enemas where she might go into the bathroom and, you know, turn on the shower like she's having a shower, but she's doing her enema kind of thing. Just, just trying to deal with uh, living, living with people and that kind of stuff. But as far as advice, I mean, I just, uh, you know, I, I don't. You know that that's all on you. You know you have to kind of look at everything and and, and and like I said, check out what your experiences are. Study, you know, kind of read the experiences of other people and and kind of see. Uh, you know, the one thing I always tell people is to uh, if you're if you're worried about that, then wait wait until you have a bowel movement and then then do your enema. You know, I've never had that problem of not being able to have natural bowel movements. I have gone long, fairly long periods of time without doing enemas and had, it was totally fine with eliminating. Um, so, and, and the people I know haven't really had those kind of issues. There are certain instances where I tell people to back off the enemas. You know, again, that's just individual kind of stuff. And there's other instances I tell someone do more of them. So, it's all very specific in, is into what somebody's going through, but but as far as that goes, I mean, a general principle I say is have a natural bowel movement and then you know do an enema. But uh, you know, so that so that 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 becomes a whole other you know if you're if you're a young person and you're you know kind of living in a household with the parents and your mom or something, you know, there's you know that that can be some some in, you know that that becomes part of a challenge, you know, part of a, a, a real life challenge of, okay, how do I practice mucus diet in the circumstances I'm in? And everybody sort of has to deal with that challenge because most of us don't live in a community or a family of other people that practice mucus diet. So we sort of have to find ways to, to do what we need to do, uh, to, to do what we have to do, you know, with the transition and the diet. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so, I mean, if you ever want to talk individually or something, you can reach out, or we could have a have a one on one or something about that. But, but, uh, but yeah, that's my two cents on on that. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so this has been a real, real good session. And uh, wow, we got a lot of a lot of viewers are <laughs> tuned in right now. So that's nice. That's real cool. So I really appreciate everybody tuning in. I know some of you guys were with us the whole time, and, uh, and I know some of you c come back. And you know these these videos usually do pretty good. With uh, even if folks aren't here live, they come back and check them out and like like the energy. And you know I always like the energy of the live chats and stuff. Uh, one thing I considered was there was this this chat thing that I could actually add to the website that would be kind of like a standalone. So people, if people, while, while we're having the discussion, if you guys wanted to chat amongst each other, we could actually set up like a little chat room uh, mm -hmm. that's going on at the same time as the Q&A. So I um, thought about doing that for today, but but I might not, uh, but I didn't didn't get a chance to set it up. But we might try that. That, might, that sounds kind of fun. Um, 
I am going to be on the uh, radio tomorrow. It's uh, I talked about that earlier. The uh, uh, four thirty two drop radio and uh, yeah, that's that's they, great, man. I'm happy about that. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, and that's, that's gonna that, be that's for the diet. Or is that for music? Well, well, both, but mo- you yeah. know, f- fundamentally the diet, and uh, it's it's, it's okay. gonna be they they they're on the the West Coast, so it will be uh, closer to what was that four or nine to I guess that that's about one one o'clock Eastern I think at one a.m. Eastern so it's kind of late if you're Eastern but one a.m. Eastern it starts at nine p.m. Uh, I guess at a specific time and uh, so yeah so I'm gonna be on within that first hour it's gonna be like you know fifteen twenty minute a uh, little period because they they have other stuff that's going on and they play music and that kind of thing but um but uh, but yeah yeah so I'm looking forward to that and. Uh, it's gonna be fun, you know. I want to do more of that. I want to start doing more, you know, kind of radio shows and finding ways to expand out of the bubble because that's the one thing about the social media. Sometimes you can, uh, you know, you kind of get stuck in in your in your bubble of people that already know you, that know your work, and all that kind of stuff. And so you have to find find ways to expand out and get out there to to more people, expand your audience and stuff. And so. Definitely in the process of doing that, and uh, and uh, so yeah, so that's uh, it's been a great, great session, and uh, you know we we came in with a little a little pass of peas, and we <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll go out with it here, and uh, so uh, so yeah, man, you got any any closing? Uh, Closing wisdom for the folks. Uh, just uh, just keep going. Just keep keep transitioning and keep reading the book, Mucus's Diet Healing System. Indeed, yeah, man. So uh, so yeah, so so those of you that that took advantage of the uh, what I said to do for the free sign. Uh, Spirit speaks. I appreciate that. I, I will say one one more time for the folks that are here, uh, and, and and this I'll close this off at at uh, at twelve midnight. So if you get on there and type in your stuff, because everything is time stamped. So if you get on to uh, mucusfreelife.com forward slash q a eight. And go in the comments section, and in the comments section, leave V equals P minus O. Then I think you might have to type a little something extra, a little, you could send a little message or something to me, but uh, V equals P minus O. Type that in the comments section, then I'll enter you in the, the free giveaway raffle, and, uh, and we'll be giving away a paperback version of Spear Speaks that's signed by me. So that's, uh, that's that. So yeah, well this has been uh as as always is is a pleasure to have the opportunity to talk with you guys, the people that are really serious about Mucus's diet, Arnold Eretz work. Uh, you know, it's just really touching. Sometimes you know, talk to different people that that are that that that'll talk to me and they'll almost be at the point of tears just as they either practice the diet for a long time or they're starting to feel better. Uh, just going down this path and transitioning and getting a little relief and they're just you, you get kind of emotional about it and that's uh, you know and that's that's real touching you know that, it, that you can kind of touch people's lives like that and that uh, you know people have a you know the, the courage because this this takes so much courage in 2015 it really does you know and so I, I pat everybody on the back for having the the, the, the courage and the foresight and the wisdom to be interested in your health and putting, you know, trying to put yourself back together. Uh, because as I agree with Brother Air, there's nothing more important than your health. And a lot of us, it's not going to be easy uh, 
uh, you know, it's not going to be an easy path all the time. And, uh, sometimes it's, it's going to be rough, and, and lots of times there's social issues, physical issues. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, but uh, I think, you know, staying dedicated to the transition, staying dedicated to the process uh, is, is key. And uh, so, again, I thank all of you for tuning in. And uh, until next time, peace, love, and breath. Cats on the town, so be cool and chill away. Life's too short, and peace of mind can't be bought by man trying. Diamonds are the cat, eagles are the don't you? The fundamental things are fine. Just turn on his mind. Nobody said, we just chill away.